will call the Monday, September 11th meeting of the Verona Common Council to order. We will begin with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll have the roll call. Ms. Clark, please. Alderperson Diaz. Here. Alderperson Doyle. Here. Alderperson Gasco. Here. Alderperson Linder. Here. Alderperson McGilvray. Here. Alderperson Riki. Here. Alderperson Steiner. Here. Alderperson Touche is absent and excused. We do have a quorum, so we will proceed with the meeting. Thank you for, for being here this evening. Uh, under public comment this evening, I know we have some people here that were at the Planning Commission meeting last week. And uh, Planning Commission, we had a number of public hearings. So when people were going to speak, they spoke under that specific topic when, it, when we got to the agenda. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands tonight that the public hearing stage uh, is over on that part of the process. So if you wish to speak, it's now during public comment. So uh, now is when we would want you to come up to the front. Uh, introduce yourself, your name and address, make sure you sign up. Uh, the, there is a sign-up sheet on the podium if you would do that. Um, but again, uh, we don't want anybody to miss out on an opportunity to speak. So if you're planning to speak tonight uh, on any agenda item, it would be now at this point, not when we get to that item on the agenda. So hopefully everyone understands and I didn't make it more complicated. <laughs> All right. Uh, so public comment, if there's anyone that wishes to speak, we would ask you to come forward now, please. Is there anyone that wishes to speak? Good evening. Thank you for listening to our comments. I'm Joe Tucker. I live on Shady Oak Lane in the town of Verona. I have a couple of comments. And first, I'd like to give you a modified copy of a petition that was submitted last week to the Plan Commission. It's now been signed by about 55 to 60 neighborhood residents and city of Verona residents. It's been signed by nearly 60% of the property owners within the boundary that's been drawn around the Northwest neighborhood. Um, and those signatures represent nearly 40% of the land area. So the area shaded in red, when you see this, is the land area represented by people who have signed the petition. And if it isn't in red, as I said the other day, that doesn't necessarily mean they're for or against it just means mostly that we didn't get to talk to everybody and we don't know how they feel. The petition is actually titled Legends End Opposition, but if you look at the points at the top of the sheet that people signed up to oppose, you'll see it goes a little deeper than that. It's definitely people saying that they think annexation and development of the Legends End parcel is very undesirable and they feel the neighborhood would be negatively affected by that. <clears throat> I think it also reflects people saying they want a rural character for this area, not tightly spaced city subdivisions and commercial development. I'll hand that over to somebody in a minute. <clears throat> My own comments and questions are these. First of all, the published Northwest Neighborhood Plan incorporates and almost seems designed around a dense development on the Pan Capital parcel of land. That project is a massive, high density, tall, urban development that would be large scale for many major metropolitan areas. It will surely block either the Ice Age Trail corridor or the trail vistas, as well as adding additional development pressure to the land west along the PD corridor. I think it's very inappropriate in size and land use for the rural character of the area, and it doesn't belong there. It also seems like direct competition for existing Verona downtown businesses, and it's hard to see a point or benefit to that. So my question is, why don't you consider doing project, projects like Legends Edge 
within the existing city boundaries rather than pushing the boundaries out. My second comment is that all of us benefit from the rural character of the land in the Northwest neighborhood area. The town residents benefit, the city residents benefit, Epic and its employees benefit, people's children and their children's children will benefit. It's beautiful glacial terrain, good farmland, and it contains the proposed corridor for the Ice Age Trail. You could help this property stay low density and rural in character, yet there's no significant consideration in the Northwest Neighborhood Plan currently for green space, open space, farmland, or the Ice Age Trail corridor. I'm asking you whether everyone would be better off if the city set aside this plan and cooperated and collaborated with the various stakeholders, many of whom had no input until very recently. And please, if you do that, don't rush the process to suit the schedule of a particular project. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Good evening. My name is Ellen Khalifa. I live at 1210 South Whitney Way in Madison. My husband, Saad, and I are business owners in Madison. We've owned businesses uh, at TCBY Yogurt on Odana Road, and we currently own the Stephen Brew West Coffee Shop. And we're interested in participating in the Legend's Edge uh, development and we're looking forward to being part of the development and living in the de community and so I'm here to represent the uh, the future of Verona and the people who will be moving here and how the the community is going to grow as a part of the epic development already because epic itself has already taken a certain type of nature from the community and so this is a continuation of that development and will push uh, Verona into the next generation. And there will always be uh, an agricultural nature to the community because it's part of the development and incorporated into the design. So I just wanted to add that and our interest in the development. Thank you. And for anyone that speaks, uh, please make sure that you fill out the uh, sign-up sheet if you would. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? If so, you can start coming forward. Um, I have a petition here in support of the legislature today. Just leave that here. Just give it to Adam there. Um, so I thought a really good point was brought up that not very many people in the surrounding community has really had any say in what's going on with this because we haven't really, you know, had a discussion with it. I know who you are, but can you introduce yourself Sorry. for I'm everyone uh, else? Zach Kerlock. I live in uh, Shady Oak Lane, Verona, Wisconsin. And I think that the reason we're here tonight is for the Northwest Neighborhood Plan, and we're setting a benchmark for what can happen in the at the, this on this property. So establishing, establishing parameters for what can happen, I think, is the first step in that communication with our community. And I, I think that's the most important thing. I just wanted to address a couple things that were brought up. Um, as, far, oh, as far as the land use, dealing with the topography and keeping the rural nature of the site, this is you know, part of the problem because we haven't really had time to talk as a community with this. It will be built into the topography of the land cascading down as the land does and a very important point is that it's going to be underneath the tree line so this isn't an obtrusive you know mass on the property this is something that's tastefully being built into the project into the into the land um, the ice age trail is to be unaffected this is not going to be blocked per the plan as the way it stands um, <clears throat> as far as uh, affecting the businesses in the local community. There are uh, studies that we'll also share that there are large unmet demands for grocery hotel and other uh, things that are going to be put onto this development. 
Um, and then my last point was about the topography of the project and how it's going to be largely unaffected by the way these buildings are put in because they're built with the land, not built on top of the land. So thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else wishing to speak? Mayor Holcomer and members of the council, my name's Joe Winicky. I live at 412 Edward Street in the city of Verona. And I'm here to speak about the Sugar, Re Sugar Creek Commons uh, development. I'm a little concerned because I see this development as one of the best things that could have happened to Verona in years and years outside of Epic. I say that because I've lived here my whole life. I remember when St. Vinny de Paul was Harrington Chevrolet. I remember when the Zerbachen property, Mr. Jim ran a car wash. I remember when the Chin Mi restaurant was called The Torque. I remember when the Avenue Auto Clinic didn't exist. And I remember where the car wash <clears throat> was or is, and that was the Milk Depot convenience store with its gravel parking lot. And a place where some people I know, and probably my twin brother used to buy beer at a young age. Saying that, that area needs help. This city in recent years has spent a whole bunch of money on a TIF to create the best project in the history of this county and one of the best in the history of this state in Epic. This community just spent four million dollars on what I would have to say is good looking but cosmetic changes on Main Street. I was on the City Council when we created the first TIF district in Verona. It was for Cross Country Heights. At the time <coughs> The TIF law did not allow for anything but basically one development, and that was for urban blight. You know that, John. Mm -hmm. The only blight over there was maybe once in a while corn, because there was no blight. There was no urban development. There was no decay. But it was a good project for the city, and a lot of people benefited from it. Now fast forward to 2017. In 2017, we got a chance to get rid of multiple things with a couple of negatives. I will give it that. But multiple things that I think help this city move forward. One is to create a gateway from the west into Verona, not just downtown. We speak too much about downtown. But go through this community and look at it and say, we have a chance to come from the west, including our, our best uh, community sponsor in Epic and create something nice. Second, if anybody doesn't know this, and I think you all do, there's a bunch of environmental remediation that needs to be done in this project. And the only way it can happen, the only way it can happen is if the project is big enough to support what I assume is a several million dollar remediation. And you can't do that by just saying, let's just get rid of the truck stop and put something there. And one third, we finally get rid of the damn truck stop. I'm very serious about this. I've lived in that area my whole life. I have no dog in this fight. I'm not involved with anybody. But it is time for this to happen. I'm told the vote on this could be close in two <clears throat> weeks when you do the actual vote. And I had a chance to come over tonight. But please look at where this city is going. Look at where the future is. And say we have one area in this community, in my opinion, that is actually somewhat blighted. And it's right there. So please, I think it's in two weeks you'd be voting on this. But when that time comes, please support this action. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Anyone else wishing to speak? Good evening. 
Kurt Maurer with Commercial Horizons. We are the development partners with Festival Foods on our project. And we have our whole team here, so when our agenda item comes up, if there's any questions, we're here to answer them for you. Thanks. Great, thank you. Hi, Dave Schutz, uh, Oak Hill Court, Verona, Town of Verona. We were reminded uh, last Tuesday night by the plan committee that this annexation is not necessarily the Legends Edge development. However, I believe that without that development, we would still be on a five to 10 year path for the, that land to be developed. This development has all the buzzwords, massive shopping center, grocery store, medical and daycare. The online description continues by saying, development is being modeled after Aspen, Miami, Vancouver, and even Menlo Park, California. In case you're not aware, Menlo Park is surrounded by San Francisco Bay, Palo Alto, and Stanford. Quite the comparison to, to hometown USA. These words are not for the town of Verona residents who this development will directly impact or even to the city of Verona, who the developer is asking to become the enabler, but to investors in New York, Vancouver, and probably even Menlo Park. To approve this annexation and development raises the appraised value of the property from close to, I would guess, $100,000 an acre based on sales of Epic property to probably millions of dollars per acre. An appraisal that can be shopped not supported by market needs, but by the city of Verona endorsement. There's a real an adage in real estate that goes, retail follows rooftops. And it means when enough people live in an area, store owners and operators soon swoop in to sell goods and services. Grocery stores require thousands of, of rooftops and tens of thousands of people within a two to three mile radius. I've done a development with hundreds of thousands of square feet of retail and a 60,000 square foot grocery store. And in my opinion, especially with Miller's and Festival Foods, the chances of a grocer swooping into this cornfield in the town of Verona is close to zero. But it's a buzzword that sells. I think the same is true for, quote, massive shopping center especially with the trend today for online shopping and stores leaving brick and mortar. Look at Sears, for example. I don't doubt that you can find somebody with the needs of Epic to sell another hotel lot and maybe even an apartment lot. But does that warrant the annexation and complete transformation of our community? I hope not. I've said it before that the residents of town of Verona have suffered ever since Epic opened their doors with an infrastructure incapable of handling the demands. Shady Oak, Woods Road, Country View, and others are no longer safe for walking or biking due to Epic employees and the constant stream of hotel buses from Madison and Middleton. These residents in the town of Verona don't deserve another development, at least until all of this infrastructure is improved and without long-term city planning. Thanks very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello, thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Borman and I live on Shady Oak Lane. Um, I was here last week when we talked about this plan with the Planning Commission and um, we heard last week of the geological and topographical significance of this land. I believe in your files you should have a letter from the mayor of Madison um, outlining the importance of this area and the Ice Age Trail and how it's very important for this area to be preserved. 
I think also last week we heard about the significance of the forest land, which I understand and I was informed last week by a representative again from the city who told us that outside of the Arboretum, this area of forest in the, the zone that is dedicated to this neighborhood plan is the largest um, swath of forest land outside of the Arboretum. The rich and fertile farmlands support dairy farms, they support agriculture in the area, and um, those will also be lost. We heard last week about the desire to preserve the rural character of this area. Even EPIC has expressed this concern about um, keep preserving the rural character of the neighborhood and the community that surrounds the EPIC complex. To develop a plan that is consistent with the existing neighborhood, which, is consist which consists of farms and single-family homes on multi-acre lots, this is the desires that we heard from the community members um, last week. I've spoken with um, residents in the community, and no one wants this neighborhood plan. I've spoken with downtown business owners. None of them want this plan, of course. It would infringe upon their businesses that they run in the downtown area. Um, the only people who benefit from this plan are a single family, and um, that's the family that owns the, the lot um, fronting PD. This plan is a case of the tail wagging the dog. Um, Adam Sayer, in conversations with me, has told me that this is a developer-driven plan. This plan would not exist had it not been for this idea of the Legend's Edge complex. Um, there's been no independent study that would suggest that this is a sound investment, that this is a sound plan. Um, there's been no independent study that would tell us what the implications are going to be for traffic what the implications might be for the light and noise pollution, which are already worsening due to the installation of numerous um, lights uh, that the city installed around that traffic um, light there. It doesn't also help that they tore down all of the uh, evergreen trees and moved those off so we lose that natural um, uh, uh, f you know, shading that we had from all of the lights. Why should we invest in a second downtown and encourage this sprawl when we need more investment in development in the Verona's downtown, this true downtown here and in, in the area that we're sitting? And so I, it left me with, with a lot of questions, um, such as, and I'm hoping that perhaps you might be able to address some of these questions um, tonight. Why, why is there no area designated for con conservation or for preservation? How can the plan be adjusted to accommodate the Ice Age Trail Corridor as requested by the mayor of Madison? If the approval of the Northwest Plan is not a de facto approval of the Legends Edge project, will the Legends Edge proposal be presented and approved separately in the, other, in the way that other new developments are to the plan commission and to the public? And if the Legends Edge plan will not pass through the same process as other developments, please explain to us why. With the exception of one small area currently serving as a driving range, why is only one property owner allocated commercial development privileges? Perhaps other property owners would consider building a hotel or multi-unit housing structures down the street from Epic on our own properties. Allowing only one developer this right smacks of impropriety. What about the endangered species noted in the North, Northwest Plan? What's, what, what are we doing to accommodate um, those endangered species? How will their habitats and survival be ensured? If the project is successful in establishing several restaurants, bars, yet another grocery store in addition to the ones that these, this, these gentlemen have proposed, uh, an ice skating rink, what will be the impact on the downtown businesses? If the project is unsuccessful, <clears throat> are there provisions for removal like these gentlemen who have proposed the grocery store um, had to abide by, that a removal by the cost of the developer of the proposed, the proposed larger buildings, including the ice skating rink, the grocery store, and the hotel, are there provisions that if the project is unsuccessful, that at the developer's cost, those would be removed? Why not consider a neighborhood plan that is consistent with the existing community, which consists of rural land, single family homes on multi-acre lots, this is not something that is unusual in this community. This is, this is what this community is based on. There are similar developments that have enjoyed great success. Just look down the street at Hawks Landing that's built on a sim similar uh, corridor off of M. Why, why wouldn't a similar project work here instead of these mass seven-story structures, 100 feet 
tall, you know, clouding our views of the rural landscape. Why not have something that's more consistent in a neighborhood plan that would be consistent with our neighborhood? Thank you for listening to me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Loveday Hurling, 4033 Barlow Road, Cross Plains, Wisconsin. Good evening. Tonight I'm representing my family who own 40 acres of land on Woods Road. My grandparents purchased this land over 40 years ago, and it's currently held in, as the Cowling Revocable Trust, for which I am the trustee. With the expiration of the boundary agreement between the City of Madison and the City of Verona, and the adoption of the new boundary agreement, between the city of Verona and the town of Verona, I am now interested in moving to the next step and determining best uses for our 40 acres. I have met with staff and engineers and support the neighborhood plan and the proposed uses on our 40 acres of land. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Kenneth Chung. I am uh, in support of the Legends Edge project. I am a um, board member of the Zabaton LLC restaurant group based out of San Francisco. I also grew up near uh, Menlo Park that this gentleman <laughs> referred to. Um, I guess to make a point that you don't want this area to be like Menlo Park. And what's interesting is when I moved um, to, uh, to Madison, Wisconsin for law school, this area reminded me a lot of the peninsula, a lot of San Francisco, a lot of um, the beauty surrounding San Francisco, the, uh, the coastal, the woods, the hills, the mountains, and the trees that are just cover the trees that cover Palo Alto and Menlo Park. It's not a dense area. It's, it's, it's a beautiful area surrounding one of the best universities in the world. And because of businesses, because of the, tech, um, the, the companies in the area, um, the technology and the growth of that area. It attracted people, attracted diversity, it attracted restaurants, it attracted, um, it, it made the area better, made the area beautiful. Now, this project that um, the Curlocks and uh, that, Zach, that Zach mentioned in this area is a thoughtfully designed development to work with the area of Verona and uh, to work um, to, ben to benefit both the, the community and, um, and to not infringe on the environmental concerns of this area. Um, the reason why I'm in, uh, my role in this project is to bring, is to enhance the, the food and beverage, um, the food and beverage atmosphere, the, uh, the, um, the food and beverage options in, in the Verona and the surrounding Madison area. Uh, with our team, we're bringing um, we're bringing bakers and patisserie chefs from some of the best Michelin restaurants in New York. We're currently talking to the executive chef at 11 Madison Park. I'm part of a restaurant group that uh, is opening two restaurants in San Francisco. Um, highly anticipated restaurants, among one of the ten most anticipated restaurants in this country. And what we're trying to do here is we're not trying to push downtown restaurants or bars or businesses out of the market. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to enhance the experience and enhance the, the needs of the people in the greater Madison area and those that live in the city. Um, and, I, and I think we can do that. And I think we can do that because of this thoughtfully designed development. It fits, it works with the area, and if you haven't looked at the plan, um, it's not like Shanghai, it's not like Seoul, it's not like a major city. It, we're, not, we're not putting a some massive sterile structure in the middle of a prairie. This is a very thoughtfully designed project that works with the environment, works with the topography. I've also mentioned, um, I've also listened to um, the people that oppose this project, and there's a lot of talk about 
competition about the concerns of the downtown area and concerns that this is going to hurt downtown business. I think there's enough demand here to open up more restaurants and to open up more retail businesses. And this is America. We're not Russia. We're not China. We're capitalist. We're premised on, on, on ideals of opportunity and options. Okay? I mean, to preclude, to preclude other businesses because you're afraid that it may or may not hurt some, some establishments downtown, I think, is against the spirit of our country. And, um, and, and the point is it won't because the demand is there. We're, it's not a mutually exclusive or a zero-sum relationship. We're only here to enhance the lifestyle, enhance the experiences um, for the people in this area. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen of the Con Council, neighbors and friends. My name is Kirill Owen. I live on Shady Oak Lane in the town of Verona. And I want you to picture for yourself driving west on Highway PD. Just after Woods Road, the view to the southwest opens up. You're driving through what was a broken dam in the Ice Age 37,000 years ago and is now the gateway to Wisconsin's deservedly <coughs> famous driftless area. Ahead of you lie the sand and gravel beds that washed out from the glacier, now deep in the soil that's some of the richest and best farmland in Dane County. Those sand and gravel beds filter the surface waters that run off the fields and the upstream ridge, and they help to protect the groundwater and the upper Sugar River. The ridge itself is a glacial end moraine with remnant oak savanna and some prairie areas. The woods on the end moraine comprise one of the largest contiguous hardwood forests in Dane County, second only to the Arboretum. Those woods are home to wildlife like deer, turkey, fox, and coyote, to rare plants like orchids, to ephemeral spring ponds that host amphibians and reptiles, and to bird populations that include pileated woodpeckers and horned owls. They also provide homes, cover, and way stations to the over 100 native and migrating bird species that I've personally observed in the last 16 years there. The woods also serve as the lungs of Dane County, helping to sequester carbon and keep our air clean. The Moraine Ridge, its outwash gap, and the viewshed along PD are significant geologic features, and that's why this area has been included in the future development plans for the Ice Age Trail. I'd like you to consider the city of Verona and its relationship to the Ice Age Trail, which is planned to continue through the area. The Ice Age Trail is not just important to Verona or to Dane County, it is the jewel of the Wisconsin State Trail System and is of national importance on the level of the Pacific Crest and Appalachian Trails. The Ice Age Trail runs right through the city of Verona and deserves to be a central factor in the city's plans for its future development. The proposed Northwest Planning Area and the Legends Edge development will severely limit Verona's ability to protect an irreplaceable view shed and will permanently mar an extraordinary landscape. I urge you not to, to approve this expansion that is being pushed through with unseemly and unnecessary, hello, did we lose this? Thank you. Yeah. I urge you not to approve this expansion. It is being pushed through with unseemly and unnecessary haste and a disregard for the city's own well thought out planning and regulatory strictures. We have the chance to build a vision for responsible, appropriate, innovative, and sustainable land use, rather than, the re than to repeat the suburban, mis rather than to repeat the suburbanization mistakes that have been made in the past. Verona could plan for becoming not just hometown USA, but rather Ice Age Hometown USA, the gateway to the driftless and a model of intelligent city planning. 
Verona can have plenty of opportunities to get this right. Please do not act in haste and get it wrong. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Joe Fiala and I live on Timber Lane here in Verona. I grew up here in Verona, went to school here and played hockey for the high school. I uh, then went to play college hockey out in the East Coast for Quinnipiac. While I was there, I finished my undergraduate degree in three years in entrepreneurship and I finished my master's degree in one year. I was able to do that because the Kerlick family allowed me to do internships the past two summers, which allowed me to get ahead in school and graduate early. Uh, this family gave me opportunities that I previously would not have been able to have. And I believe that this family is going to help improve Verona and give us opportunities that were previously unimaginable. Now they've given me the opportunity to work full time and be uh, in charge of business development and also in charge of the next wave of interns, as you can see in the back. And uh, I believe that his family cares and I believe in the Legends Edge development. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Robert Ellis Bo. I'm known as. Uh, I live at 2970 Osmondson Road in Seminole Hills in Fitchburg, but I'm in the Verona School District. All three of my children went through the Verona schools and graduated and are now done with college. I have a girl at Edgewood still. Um, I moved to Fitchburg where I live because I was in Verona School District. I got involved with the community. I coached hockey for here for 13 years. I supplied all the labor to build your Little League diamonds. All my guys did that for free. Um, I, I now I'm good friends with the Curlicks, but I, the last 10 years I've leased their land for hunting. It's the 65 in front and the 40 in the back. It's kind of hypocritical because the land to our south of the 40, to the west of the 40, and to the east of the 40 have all been slashed out and logged by people opposing this thing, but they're still worried about the environment. Okay, um, I am a develop. I'm a carpenter for 32 years. I own my own business. I've worked on projects in Philadelphia, Florida, built 11 bars around the U.S. for the Fortney Group out of La Crosse, and I've seen good developments and bad developments. This is a great development. I worked on a development in Lake Mary, Florida, which was awarded the number one development of the year for the national developer, and this is like cutting edge stuff, and they're trying to like cripple. These millennium kids you got working on at Epic, you got 10,000 kids out there making 70,000 a year. That's $700 million. And they're all going and living in Madison. It's crazy because you guys are, you need to keep some of this money in Verona. You guys captured 5% of that money is $35 million to this community. And that's all I want to say. Thank you. I support Legends Edge. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Caleb Baltus. I live at 5841 Scarlet Drive in Fitchburg. And I grew up in Verona my whole life. I went through the charter school system, graduated from the high school and everything. And I recently graduated from the UW-Madison. And to kind of speak to Bo's point, I want to give this from a point of view of a young professional. And you know, I had a job offer from Epic. And when you evaluate the housing situation in Verona, it's, it's not very appealing to a young professional. And like you said, as it stands right now, you have more than 10,000 people actually working there, making a very good wage going back to Madison, bringing all their business back to Madison, all their grocery, all their gas and everything, and that's not being contributed to Verona. So I think it's very important that you bring that demographic into this town because it's only going to help it continue to build. For that reason, and also you're going to keep a skilled workforce in the area that could help our businesses locally and even start new businesses downtown here. So I think it's only going to advance Verona, and I support the project, and I hope you guys too. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Um, um, my name is Luke Lastico. I live at 847 Harper Drive here in Verona. Um, I'm a new member of the Verona community. And um, you know, a big reason that I moved to Verona is 
um, you know, starting a family. I've got a young, young family, um, and schools played a big part of that, but also the Verona community. And I understand, um, you know, that was the big draw for me. Um, I didn't have any interest in living in downtown Madison. Uh, Middleton's a nice place, but uh, Verona was wh wh where I decided to be ultimately. I, um, I'm in support of this development. I feel that uh, on both sides of the aisle, there's a lot of things that need to happen. And um, my hope is that um, you know, we can work together here and come up with a solution um, that will hopefully you know, benefit everybody involved. Um, I think it's a huge opportunity for the city of Verona um, to you know, complement what's already established with the Epic community. And um, I think that this project, um, you know, as long as uh, everybody does their due diligence on it and, and they, they think through um, you know, what is going to be done or accomplished on this parcel of land that is so important, uh, I, I just be, I feel like it's a, a great opportunity for um, you know, what the Curlicks have in mind. Um, they've done their due diligence. Um, they spent 10 years, uh, you know, trying to come up with, you know, what they have presented to everybody here. Doesn't mean that that, uh, I, don't, I don't think that they're willing to work with everybody to make some changes or some tweaks. And I, and I hope that we can, you know, hopefully find a, a middle ground that works for everybody. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Mayor and the rest of the representatives. My name is Jay Drenz. Uh, I live at 1025 Gateway Pass, uh, accompanied by my wife, Paula. We've been uh, residents of Verona for 14 years now with uh, kids uh, who are both in the high school, one freshman uh, this year and a, uh, and a senior. Uh, Paula and I decided to move to Verona um, from the southwest side of Madison uh, in hopes to find a place where we could raise, raise kids in a safe environment in a school district that we knew was excellent. And in every way, uh, our 14 years have proven that our decision to come was the right decision. Uh, we've been involved at different levels uh, with different school events within some of the sporting events here in town. And it has been an exceptional experience um, over the years. However, the one thing that has struck us is that Hometown USA, as quaint as it is in many ways, has always felt like a community where the planning was somewhat organic. That Main Street was, was something that just kind of happened. That the businesses, although quaint in many ways, and businesses we will always do business with, were, were things that just kind of arrived um, because of the families that lived here because of the connections that they had with the community. And it has struck us over the time that we've been here that as, uh, as delightful that, has, that that has been, it seems that the overall planning has been without premeditation. But when we heard about this project, I have to admit that we were very excited uh, because what, what's proposed, uh, and even though it stands in contrast to the simplicity of this city, What's proposed is truly congruent with some of the other things that you folks have already decided to do. City Hall, the fire station, the library, an exceptionally expensive high school, discussions about swimming pools. I would submit to you that this plan is not incongruent with what momentum is already at play in this community. And that is one where we recognize that the people who live here are seeking exceptional resources, exceptional 
services. And in every regard, this plan appears to be as much in the same spirit as the things we've already chosen to do. Now, I realize that there's sensitivities about its location. Having grown up on the west side of Madison since 1972, I will tell you, as my family stared across the street at a cornfield at the top of Gammon Road, we knew that one day progress would occur and that that cornfield would yield its way to development and homes and schools and services. And as I myself work a job on the far west side of Madison, and as I gaze east looking to where I grew up, I realize that that momentum was an assured reality moving forward. I don't see that as being dissimilar here in Verona. We moved here because we were looking for an ideal and exceptional experience. And Legends End is an opportunity to demonstrate to everyone around us that we are in a period of premeditation and consideration for how to make Verona truly a destination. Its location for this development is outside of the city center. Whether or not we can consider it to stand in contrast to the businesses that are already here, Taco Bell, McDonald's, Little Caesars, Dairy Queen, Brews Brothers, Culver's, I would submit to you that the, we are not speaking the same apple to apple language. Legends Ends is, is n in no way in competition with these businesses. As far as the consideration of grocery stores and other amenities that this development offers, I would submit to the group that we are not in stark contrast to what we have. Those businesses on Main Street are there to serve a purpose next to the ice rink, next to the baseball diamonds, next to what we consider the city center. And this development is an opportunity for us to have amenities and different services for the first time in the area that will not only meet the needs of our immediate constituents, but those on the southwest side of Madison, Hawks Landing. It, it's truly an opportunity to elevate our um, living environment um, like never before. So we and my family are in support of the development, realizing the sensitivities that exist regarding its planning. We would, of course, appeal to the group to be careful and thoughtful in that planning, but I did want to express our support of it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Matt Kerlick. I am a sophomore at Verona High School, and I am currently in an internship with Legends Edge for architecture. And I really feel that Legends Edge will really put a great thing for us in Verona, like how I'll be able to go and get some great food with a great meal and stuff over McDonald's and stuff like that. And I feel like it'll be a great community for everyone. There's so many things to do there compared to inside Verona, not many options. And I just 100% agree with it. And I think that it'd just be a great thing for us to have. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ryan Ritter and I live at 1026 Cree Bay Court in Verona, Wisconsin. I am a sophomore at Verona High School and I also play on the hockey and golf team for the school. I'm doing an internship alongside Mac with Legends Edge. This internship has given me a chance to learn more about future careers that I might go into later on in life. This internship is giving me chances to learn more about architecture and just 
life lessons that I might use it later on in life. I support this development because it will help me later on in life and, I, and will help other members in the Verona community. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone else that wishes to speak this evening? Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Danielle Fessler, and I'm a senior at the University of Wisconsin-Madison currently. Um, so as my college days are coming to an end, I'm really seriously looking at opportunities to further my professional career, and this is what I see in Legends Edge. Opportunities and not just a few, but many different major breaths. From the beautiful hotel to the incredible restaurants, grocery store, and small retail shops, I see tremendous opportunity for the city of Verona and not only to preserve what is already here, but to further it. We are very in keeping in mind what is in this city currently and not to destroy it. I come from a small town, um, Kohler, Wisconsin, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with Kohler, but there's the American Club there, golf course, beautiful things there. When those things were first coming to Kohler, you know, everybody was against it. They were putting things into our backyard, so I very much understand what the people of Verona, their concerns. It wasn't until the Kohler, people of Kohler, took into consideration the benefits that Kohler would have to the city that they truly began to understand why the project would be meaningful. And I don't know if any of you have been to Kohler, but it's a beautiful destination for all of Wisconsin now. So by this, by bringing Legends Edge to Verona, it would be a beautiful place for friends and family to gather, tucked inside the historic elements of the land that will serve the community for many generations to come. I am a proud member of Team Legends Edge. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jack Curley. I'm a senior at Verona Area High School. I've grown up in Verona my entire life. Um, I support the development of Legends Edge. Um, I'm currently in two internships, one with architecture and one with culinary. I've been given the opportunity to learn many great things from these. Um, as a high school student, I could probably speak for most students that I like hanging out with my friends, family, so and so. And I think Legends Edge will create that spot, create that place to hang out with your friends and family. And I think Verona is lacking such such thing. Legends Edge will also bring a more healthy lifestyle when it comes to restaurants, period, if in comparison to what we have now. Um, and overall, just a place you can escape with friends, family, a place to be, to spend time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Hi, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, my name is Teresa Keggy. I live in the town of Verona and have since 1997 with my family, my husband and children. Um, we also chose to move to the town of Verona for the purpose of the school districts and what the Verona community had to offer. Um, however, over the past couple of years, we feel I've also noticed that it has become to develop more of a fast food town and alley, <laughs> which does support the needs of a lot of the sports teams, which my children are also on, but it doesn't really support the needs of the thousands of people that are new and coming into Epic and trying to keep them into the city and town of Verona. And for the residents who prefer to, like when we want to go have a nice dinner somewhere, there's not that there's not nice restaurants in Verona, but they're kind of limited. And so rather than going into the Madison area, we would prefer to stay in the Verona area. So we 
support and feel that Legends Edge would bring that to the community as well. Um, as long as, as, also with the fact that we've also known the Kerlick family and we know how hard they've also worked, they want to support the community and keep the community strong and rather than having people go out to the other areas. So we definitely support and feel that Legends Edge would only benefit um, the Verona area and hope that you can help support that. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Mr. Mayor, board members, my name is Paul Vetterly. I'm a former board member in New Glarus, village board member, and I like to address uh, transportation. I am a bus driver. I've been going to uh, Epic for the last 10 years every day uh, from the Middleton Hotels. There's 250 guests that come in that are being trained at Epic, and they're all staying at Middleton Hotels. So I have to fight the traffic every day, like everyone else, to try to get into Epic. The Legends Edge project, you have a hotel that is one mile from Epic. It does not drive by any house. There is not one house on the way from Northern Lights to Hubble Drive at that stoplight. And the second point is that in two weeks, there's going to be 180 buses just working for Epic. Epic is here. Out of the 180 buses that are coming here, 30 of the bus loads are coming out of Baraboo. I'm sorry, Bar uh, Wisconsin Dells, because they have all the hotels in Madison already booked. On the side of uh, Epic employees, of the 10,000, if you look at a, f a small number, let's say just 1,000 a, a cars, out of the 10,000 live with the, all your carpooling, the people live in Verona, Fitchburg, so forth. If you have 1,000 cars coming out of Madison, it's 30 miles round trip. That's 30,000 miles a day, just people coming from Madison to Epic. So transportation is something I think we need to really think about of how to, if you have uh, many of those employees that live right here, instead of going uh, all the way from Madison, it, I think it has a very important, uh, important uh, issue to have here. So anyway, <coughs> I support the Legends Edge project. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else wishing to speak? Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, my name is Charles Dykeman, and I live in Monona. Uh, my wife and I are retired. I work for the state and Bonnie for the Madison School District. We own 40 acres uh, of land at about the top uh, of Woods Road. Uh, this has been family land and uh, has been in the family since about the 1950s. I recognize that this is uh, a neighborhood plan discussion, but it's incorrect to say, well, this is only a neighborhood plan. We've gone through this before. The city of Madison uh, was working on setting up a neighborhood plan for the same area and uh, we learned at that time that although neighborhood plans are not set in stone, but there's a heavy weight on neighborhood plans for future development. Now this neighborhood plan has really not been vetted. It's o it only began in April of 2017. Uh, we listened uh, to a plan at the Plan Commission in Verona and there was a lot of work with the neighbors. Uh, and the plan commission thought this was, was a very positive thing. Uh, this is, I think, what you'd have to say is unusual because the neighborhood plan 
and the Legends Plan uh, are very close together. Um, it's almost a carbon copy for the project at Woods Road and PD. Now, any development increases the tax base, uh, but it also increases the services necessary. And this is quite a ways uh, out from Verona proper. Uh, municipalities uh, have recently been receiving reduced income because of some lawsuits began in part by Walgreens. Uh, and just recently, the Wisconsin Supreme Court held that an assessment made by a municipality uh, was ineffective, uh, and the opinion suggests that uh, in the future, uh, the courts are going to play a lot bigger part uh, in assessments than they have before, and that uh, boards of review uh, have have been dealing with very significantly. We recently learned that it uh, that our 40 acres probably won't be developed for 20 years uh, because uh, it needs a water tower. It's beyond the pumping range, and water towers nowadays cost two million dollars, and we don't have two million dollars. Um, I'm. 80 years old next year, so we're looking for what to do. Uh, we aren't any longer looking for a standard sort of development. Uh, so we've contacted the Verona School District, Madison School District, Dane County, DNR, Town of Verona, and City of Verona uh, because we think that a joint project of the sorts of things that these entities do uh, for their constituents might be a workable sort of thing. We can't afford to just donate the land, but we think a joint project would be a pretty good idea. Bonnie, my wife, particularly likes that sort of idea. This land overlooks the escarpment of the terminal moraine. A 100 a foot hotel would destroy that sort of view that the uh, Ice Age Trail is trying to take uh, advantage of. The Ice Age Trail is scheduled uh, to take maybe two or three acres in the corner of our land, and we'd certainly like to see that being something that users of the Ice Age Trail can go to to be able to see something in the neighborhood of open land. A neighborhood plan is for neighbors. It considers their views and interests. Uh, Verona has adequate land for development and for redevelopment as we saw at the Plan Commission last week. Businesses really need to be downtown and not have the whole, down, uh, the whole business community spread over a large area. Uh, this should not be a West Verona, a sort of like a balloon at the end of a string. Um, my suggestion uh, is for the council to ask the plan commission to consider changes to the neighborhood plan and report its findings back to the Common Council. Now, uh, Mayor Hockhammer mentioned at the Plan Commission meeting that the Plan Commission really had only three things that it could do. It could approve the neighborhood plan, uh, not approve the neighborhood plan, uh, or take no position. I think that the Plan Commission, from the question that I heard and from uh, what they had been doing in other projects is a unique organization. It's got people <clears throat> on it that know what they're doing, at least from, from what we've seen. So I think that if this council were to refer to the plan commission and ask for, if they can't make recommendations, at least their comments, their observations, uh, and 
what they feel about a project that really, in my view, does not fit in this neighborhood. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak under public comment? Anyone else wishing to speak? It's your third and final opportunity. Seeing no one else, we will move on with the agenda. Uh, next, we have approval of minutes from the August 28th Common Council meeting. Those minutes were included with your packet. What's your pleasure? We have a motion by Mr. McGilvery. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Rieke. Were there any additions or corrections to the minutes of the previous meeting? Seeing none, all those in favor of approval of minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Uh, under Mayor's business, just a couple things. First of all, um, I really want to say on behalf of the council our appreciation to uh, the people that spoke tonight and the respect that you've had for each other. We don't always see that. So we really respect that. Um, we don't always have to agree, but we, we should always respect each other. Um, I also wanted to mention, I know that if any, you know, probably everybody, they should be watching the news and seeing what's going on in other parts of the country. And hopefully we can all agree that our thoughts and prayers should be with those people that are struggling right now. And then uh, finally, when I came yesterday to pick up my mail, I also had the opportunity, there were a number of our uh, police staff that were out in the parking lot, and I also got to meet our new canine, Drea, who turns two years old today. So if you get a chance to go see uh, Drea, welcome her to our community, and uh, this is just a really good thing. I'm really excited that we have a, a canine, our own canine in, in the city of Verona. So with that, we're going to move along on the agenda. We will have the administrator's report next. Mr. Mikorski. Thank you. I just have a couple items. I uh, wanted to remind council that um, our final uh, finance committee working on, uh, on the budget will be September 13th, at, starting at 5 o'clock. Um, we have a, uh, a public project uh, going on September 14th. Uh, Ford Development Group and JSD Professional Services is, uh, uh, will be holding a workshop talking about neighborhood designs. Uh, that's uh, in this room on September 14th, again at 7 o'clock. Uh, and uh, Dane County City Villages and Cities and Villages Administration will be having a membership meeting uh, coming up uh, September 20th. Uh, from 5 to 7, it's at Wanakee uh, Village Center. So I wanted council to uh, know that information. Thank you, Mr. Mikorski. Are there any questions for the administrator? Seeing none, we will we'll move on to the engineer's report. Mr. Mompass, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you have my full report before you, but a couple of highlights. The uh, 2017 street rehab, the curb and gutter is complete, sidewalk is being poured, and the hopefully weather dependent uh, pavement will be going down later this week. And the Lincoln Street Channel, which is right outside the uh, city offices here, is uh, 50 or 60 percent complete. You can see uh, a lot of work going on out there right now. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Monpass? Seeing none, thank you, Jeff. We will move on then to committee reports. We will begin with the Finance Committee. Mr. McGilvery, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Under item 9A1, I'll make a motion to approve payment of the monthly bills in the amount of five million three hundred and $300,533.15. We have a motion by Mr. McGilvery. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Linder. Mr. McGilvery, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In the way of explanation, three of the larger items from this month's bills, uh, the first being the Dane County Clerk of Court for right-of-way acquisition for the County Highway M uh, project, uh, parcel 16. That amount is $357,617.63. Uh, next one being to Epic Systems for our TIF 7 TIF Note Parking Garage 1. Uh, that was a prepayment on that amount, uh, a bond we had. Saved approximately uh, $623,000 in, in interest payments. That amount of payment is $4,205,925. And finally, uh, to Parisi Constructions for our downtown streetscape construction. That amount, $201,486.86. Thank you, Mr. McGilvery. Uh, questions or comments on the major expenditures or the bills in general? 
Seeing none, all those in favor of the approval of the bill signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carried and the bills are approved. Anything else from the Finance Committee? No, sir. Thank you, Mr. McGilvery. We will move on then to Planning Commission uh, items. Mr. Sayre, agenda item 9B1, please. Thank you. The first item is discussion regarding the Northwest Neighborhood Plan. The proposed Northwest Neighborhood Plan is generally bounded by County Highway PD to the south, University Ridge Golf Course to the east, the Goodman Jewish Community Center to the west, and the Town of Rona to the north. This plan will guide the future growth and development of lands located northwest of the city. Jason Valerius from MSA Professional Services is available tonight to provide an overview to the Common Council at tonight's meeting. The Plan Commission held a public hearing on the draft plan on September 5th, 2017. Comments and concerns, concerns raised during the public hearing included the following that the project is not consistent with the rural character of the area. The project is in direct conflict competition to the downtown redevelopment. Concerns about, excuse me, concerns about existing and future traffic, including traffic on existing town roads. Concerns about the Legends Edge development. Uh, concerns the plan promotes sprawl. Concerns the plan does not maintain the small town feel as identified in the comprehensive plan. A lack of green space in the plan and a general desire to accommodate the Ice Age Trail with more green space. Written comments received prior to and at the Plan Commission have been included in the Council Packet. The Plan Commission discussed this item at the September meeting. Comments from the Plan Commission included concerns about densities and heights identified in the plan. The Plan Commission deferred action on the plan and requested the plan be forwarded to the Common Council for feedback. Tonight, the Council is encouraged to provide feedback on the plan. Thank you, Mr. Sarah. Before we take any questions or comments, could you just uh, briefly talk about the timeline and the process of how we got to where we are today, please? Sure, I guess, would you like Jason Valerius to provide his sure. overview that he provided the Planning Commission? Sure. Okay. Jason? All right, I realize it was a uh, limited question that doesn't really require um, a lot behind it, but uh, our first slide here is about the planning process. Again, I'm Jason Valerius with MSA Professional Services. Um, we started this process with interviews with a number of the uh, property owners in the planning area back in April, as I think was mentioned earlier tonight. And um, we met with the Plan Commission to present some initial thoughts and ideas in May, and then a full fledged, uh, a full draft of the plan in June. There was a uh, public meeting, an open, open invite uh, public meeting with presentation, and then some um, open house style time on June 29th. And um, then we came back to Plan Commission on September 5th last week with. Um, a, for a public hearing. So um, I've made uh, similar presentations at most of those meetings, and um, that's how we got to today. Great. Thank you so much, Jason. So we will open it up for questions and comments. Mr. Diaz, please. Thank you. Um, I have a, a bunch of questions, but um, to start out with, could you, could you talk about the endangered species? That was something I was wondering about as well, and it came up during public comment. Yeah, so there's, um, I think we identified um, per uh, state data that there are likely a couple of, of endangered species in the area. Um, the state, and this may sound odd, I know it does to some people, the state doesn't really um, advertise what those are, where they are, um, because they are uh, concerned about not wanting to draw attention to them, and that's kind of counterintuitive. But um, what, I can, what I can tell you is that I would expect anything that we would need to be worried about, it would be in the, um, in the woodlands um, in, within the planning area. So that's the area that we would pay attention to. And when, if and when uh, development, specific developments are proposed, an evaluation of those lands um, would be necessary. Go ahead, Mr. Diaz. 
Thank you. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people talked about the Ice Age Trail, and I'm a, a big supporter of it. Could you clarify the impact this project will have? Because I mean, I don't, I don't think anyone thinks it's going to like literally cut off the Ice Age Trail, but is it going to be kind of blocking potential corridor land? I can, I can take that. Um, I mean, clearly this, um, and if we could actually go to a map, I can show you. that we have identified um, skirting along the north edge of the neighborhood plan area um, through the yellow, a potential route for the trail. Uh, so the, the trail exists right now through the golf course and comes out kind of at the top of the hill um, on Woods Road. And so um, the intent is that it will eventually meet up through these lands and on into the town um, going out the north side of the planning area. So um, the exact route and the amount of land that would be reserved um, relative to any development that might be proposed uh, is uh, something to be worked out during any development process or during you know acquisition of land specifically for the purpose of of trail reservation or construction pre pre development. Um, we haven't specified a dimension of land to be reserved, but we have shown the trail. So the intent of this plan is one way or another, the trail will be there. Thank you. Um, to, to offer a comment on that, I, I guess my thing is I'd like to designate the green space now. I mean, because my goal is, is to make sure the Ice Age Trail, um, I guess, lives up to its full potential. Um, I think it's a big keystone for the area. And, and like I said, I'm a big fan. And I think, I mean, we have other green space on there. So I'd like to just basically take it off, take it off the um, plate and say this isn't going to get developed. Um, and then I guess uh, uh, my final question then is is just in general with with the the boundary agreement between the town of Rona and the city of Rona, is wh where is this? Is this like in our A area or B area? The entire planning area is in the B area. So so that leaves me with another question: Why why are we in area B? When when my understanding is we'd go to area A first. Mr. Sarah, please. The boundary agreement did not specify the sequencing of how that would happen. Um, you know, the area A was identified as a, uh, what we anticipate a future type, more in the near future type growth area. Uh, B was identified as a joint uh, town city interest area. Um, part of that was the reason for that was just some of those lands in some B areas, maybe not this area, but other areas are kind of up the, in the up in the air in question of how and when and can we actually serve them for development? So um, that was more of the, it's going to happen. It's just the timing of the B area was, was unknown in the adoption of the agreement. Thank you. That's all for now. Thank you. Questions or comments? Additional questions? Mr. Steiner, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Adam, um, the big concern coming from the people I've talked with is the development of the roads. Um, we, we did not find any planning on how they're going to handle Highway D PD or um, even a, a four-lane road instead of a two-lane road. Um, I know McKee Road is being worked on towards Madison, but uh, this huge development probably should even have a second or a third exit point or entrance point into this development and is there any possible way that they can have more than just one entrance or one exit other than onto PD? Sure any any development kind of at that large of a scale if it's the Legends Edge project or something else would take a traffic impact analysis a TIA uh, those, those haven't been completed yet mostly just because we need to get through the neighborhood planning process first uh, along with some other items after this, um, we did look at, at, at part of the kind of the planning of this area. We did look at a road connection between Shady Oak and Woods Road that would have gone over the, the ridge line that's there. And to be quite honest with you, I don't think it's uh, economically feasible or even from an engineering standpoint, it'd be very difficult to get that east west connection. Um, access points, the PD in general, you know, between Woods and Shady Oak from a city perspective, I think they're limited. 
just from how we look at it of trying to control access onto PD and onto a four lane highway. You know, so we've, how we've set up our transportation plans are, is to, to, to limit that access. Um, but as projects come forward, those traffic impact analysis will be completed. Go ahead, Mr. Um, Steiner. A, a follow up. Um, most of the folks in the northern part of District 3 that I represent are really against this project because they don't see how all those people are going to first off get in there and once they're living there how are they going to get out of there to, to contribute to their way of life uh, for example going to work um, how are we going to get uh, people who are using that area for recreation in and out of there while all these other people are coming and going or trying to go to work we need to do more work with the Dane County before we do anything on this development in my opinion because this is just another clog that will just eat up our police officers as they try to deal with this type of a development uh, without planning with the roads uh, more roads more than one way in and out and I don't know where it's going to be. I looked at a, a topography map. Um, I didn't see a possibility anywhere. Uh, maybe even a road to Riley, huh? Thanks. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Feedback for the Pine Commission. Mr. Linder, please. Thank you. Um, so, Mr. Sayer, what are we just looking for feedback tonight? Is that, I guess that's the, I didn't hear that com confirmed. Was that your? Yes, okay, yes, forward. please. I think the Planning Commission is looking for feedback. I know as staff, speaking as behalf of staff here, uh, we would appreciate any feedback and any feedback that you can provide that is specific. So if there is a specific concern that you have, that would be very beneficial to us. The more detail you can provide us, uh, the better. But I know the Planning Commission is looking to hear what the council has to say. But as staff especially, if, if there are changes the council would like to have us take a look at, that that's that's what we're looking for or if you want to endorse the plan or you like what's in here tell us what you like as well that's that's what we're here want to hear tonight okay and then the uh, so the future land use map the you know there's a lot of yellow for uh, residential housing and some lower density apartments but is uh, what is the projected density of the mixed use area commercial mixed use area I didn't see that in that packet Sorry, um, for the mixed use area, um, I don't, I think that we had set a um, maximum, I'm just trying to track it down. One of the challenges, of course, is that uh, the fact that it is mixed use uh, can render, uh, you know, units per acre not very meaningful. Um, but, um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, so 15 units per acre and 65 feet of height is uh, what the limit would be unless um, by uh, the city's approval based on agreement that the design quality uh, has been enhanced, the plan would allow the city to approve up to 50 units per acre and up to 100 feet in height. So if you're looking at the planning document, that is uh, the top left of page 15. So if whenever this gets, if this gets approved or not, if let's say it does get approved at some point, they would be limited to 15 units per an acre unless we said they could go up to 50. Correct. But there's nothing stopping them for asking for 70, 100, whatever it is. Well, you this the plan it comes at a PUD process. They can they can ask for whatever they like. So uh, I'll, I'll take a shot, and Adam can fill in. Uh, <laughs> the the um, neighborhood plan is proposed to be an amendment to your comprehensive plan. Your comprehensive plan doesn't address this area right now, and so you would be 
uh, amending your comprehensive plan to address this area with this content. And if you, ad if you adopted it as it's written right now, uh, your comprehensive plan would say uh, that you could approve up to 50 units per acre and 100 feet in height. And so uh, if you got a proposal for more than that and were interested in approving that, you would first need to amend the comprehensive plan to be consistent with state statute before you would approve more than that. Go ahead, Mr. Lender. Um, so basically, you're asking about if we want to put residential here, mixed use here, with slash commercial, and then lower density apartments, so to speak, in this location. Is that correct? Is that the gist of it? The we're not talking about legend. We're not talking about Legends Edge tonight. I know there's a lot of comments, Legends, uh, Legends, but that project is not actually on. The board on the on the agenda tonight. They're talking about the land that's potentially used for Legends Edge. Correct. Um, the intent of this process, if I could, if I could offer an explanation that sort of puts it into context, I think the intent of this process was to. Um, it, it was kicked off by uh, the Legends Edge uh, proposal, and uh, that proposal was in a concept of a conceptual nature, not. I believe as an official submittal, please approve this or deny this now. Um, but uh, it was recognized that the city really wasn't in a place to be able to approve it absent thinking about the wider area and the relationship between that and the wider area. So uh, we went into this process looking at the entirety of this portion of the future city to understand how all the pieces could fit together. Uh, the way the neighborhood is plan, plan is written right now um, the Legends Edge project is um, approvable if you have this in place first, recognizing that you also need to uh, exercise, the council would need to um, agree that it's satisfied with uh, you know, the, the quality of design and quality of development uh, before, and so it, it, before it would uh, approve above 15 units per acre. The, the reason I'm asking those questions is I do, I would like, I, I think this is actually is a good spot for commercial mixed use uh, along PD. Um, I'm not sold on specifically on the Legends Edge project, um, um, but to have some sort of development along here I think is a good, is a good fit. Um, it is a little bit farther out from the city, so that's one of my hesitations. Um, as far as, you know, the density for if it's above 50 units an acre is getting really high 100 unit or 100 feet high is really high it's not nothing we've got even came close to before i know there are some properties in uh, just to the north of there and near hawks landing that are pretty large and it's you know only a mile or two away but for verona that would be a new a new uh, venture for us um, but as far as the land use using that stuff you, you know what is presented I don't have a big problem with that as it is, but I would have issues with the density if it, I mean, 15 units an acre, no problem. 50, not sure, 100 units an acre or more, it'd be really tough. Um, that's one of the big things. And I think Mr. Steiner brought up a lot of good transportation questions. There's gonna be a lot of people on that road. It seems to be more and more all the time that you're adding a lot of people there. That'll definitely be something to be figured out. Um, the last thing I'd like to say is, I'd like to say thanks for everybody coming out at State 30 on a, Monday night, so thank you for coming on and uh, coming to talk to us tonight. Last week for the plan commission, I know that one got started late, so thank you for coming out tonight. Thank, thank you, Mr. Linder. Just a, a couple of follow-ups to what Mr. Linder stated. So the a neighborhood plan would have to be approved, um, and annexation would have to occur, and urban service area approval would all have to be approved um, before this project or any project in this area could go forward. So I'm not sure if everybody understands that. The neighborhood plan would have to be approved. Uh, urban service area would have to go through the Regional Planning Commission and annexation would have to be applied for and, and considered. But other questions or comments? Ms. Doyle, please. Thank you. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to so many folks for reaching out and not only coming to tonight's meeting but emailing and um, calling it's always nice to get a better sense of feedback from the community and just more ideas coming to the table are always a good thing um, i would echo some of the earlier comments related to looking at maybe preserving more open space especially in relation to the ice age trail i think it's 
very important that we do that on the front end of the process as opposed to trying to do that belatedly once developments are already trying to move forward and using this plan as a template i feel like it's better to err on the side of caution and again um, set aside more land for that purpose uh, one thing i did like about the proposed materials was that um, the need for possible expansion of bus service was identified i know the current routes primarily service epic so to see an expansion of that would help um, relieve some of the issues that came up during public comment related to transportation, easing environmental impacts and traffic congestion, um, which would both be positive things to come out of this plan. Let's see. Um, also was wondering, as was alluded to during public comment, why this particular parcel was cited for commercial or mixed use development. Not sure if it was related to provision of urban services or how that kind of came out through the process. Jason, please. Sure. Um, the uh, traffic patterns out there um, in terms of uh, where the traffic is going right now for uh, Epic, uh, back and forth between Epic and Madison, basically, um, and the topography um, uh, to some extent, but primarily the traffic patterns and uh, you know the number of people going by these sites is really what drives it to that corner of the planning area. Um, we, I would note uh, that we made an effort to uh, show and plan for a uh, transition in feel as you go west along PD from the east end of the site uh, near that intersection with uh, Northern Lights. Uh, to the west, and in particular when you go through that, uh, uh, past the central drainage way through the middle of the planning area, uh, the, the plan accounts includes a uh, required setback and greenway along the highway there to uh, push development further back to make a transition from a more urban to a more rural feel at that point. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a couple more comments. Thank you. Um, another portion was I know the um, report talked about affordable housing and how that is probably going to be more um, kind of determined by market demands, especially in these type of developments. Um, it seems like it's more on the higher end of things. Of course, it would be great to see more work done to make projects more affordable, but again, higher density seems to be one of the few mechanisms, especially in, in areas of this type to do so, um, which again is kind of a trade-off moving forward. But if we could maybe explore different ways to try and make this a more accessible property to folks of different incomes, it would be great to see that included if possible. Um, and then just kind of addressing a couple of the, the ideas that came up about planning in general for Verona. Um, how we've kind of followed a more organic planning process and I could see where that would appear to be the case in some areas of the city which is why I think getting these plans um, done very thoughtfully on the front end is so important and why we as a city are looking to hire an economic development coordinator and uh, just look forward to kind of diversifying some of our more traditional development that's been going on in the core of the city through this and I think again if we do it thoughtfully and, and in both a financially and environmentally sustainable way we can hopefully achieve that through this process um, and couldn't help but uh, make a little food plug for some of the newer restaurants here in Verona since that seems to be a pervasive theme in many of these public hearings but uh, I know Liberty Business Park was actually just featured in Madison Magazine for Verona Woods and some other options so just glad to see so much interest in the development here in, in Verona. Thank you. Other comments, feedback for the Planning Commission or for staff? Ms. Gasco, please. Yes, I would just like to second Alder Doyle's uh, request to see a little bit more attention paid to housing affordability. It's, it's one paragraph in this plan and, and across all of our plans I'd really like to see that given more attention because market rate apartments are affordable for a certain segment of the population but that's how we seem to set uh, our definition of what's affordable, and I don't know that that's accurate. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments? Ms. Rickey, please. 
I guess I'm just echoing what other people have said, but I, I really think that it's important that this type of development definitely be on municipal water and sewer, so I was glad to see that, and um, that some more workforce housing be available, and um, that I like the Alder Diaz's idea of preemptively including preservation of green space, especially around the Ice Age Trail. Thank you. Other feedback? Mr. McGilvery, please. Thank you. Um, in listening to comments tonight, it, it seemed to be the focus was on the land, or, or the legends end. And if we're going to, it seems like uh, to the point of the people who were opposed, the, the legends end is the end result of this plan. I <coughs> sure would like to see a little more information on what that really is. I, I can hear the people who are supporting it, but I, I don't know what it is. If it's 100 foot tall buildings I'm absolutely opposed I would agree with the people <coughs> who are in the town I'm I'm in the city right now but I'll be in the town and uh, I can see why you'd be opposed to a hundred foot tall buildings uh, without knowing what it is that you're actually proposing on the legend inside it's pretty hard for me to make a educated decision about uh, an overall plan so moving forward um, even though I know that's not what we're talking about doing but it sure seems like it to anybody I'm sure who's listening tonight oh uh, yes this is about the neighborhood plan but it's as near as I can tell it was all about uh, Legends End so uh, is there any opportunity for us to get in more information about that and how it works within this neighborhood plan and the other thing I would say is you know there's um, is everybody who is included, every landowner who's included in this plan, they were involved in the conversations? Mr. Stair, please. So, so we did meet with, uh, individually with, um, I forget how many landowners. It was mostly the principal larger landowners in this area. That's typically how we do these planning processes. We sit down with the larger landowners. Uh, we did notify all people within the planning area uh, for the the open house, which was held in Ju June, June, June. Um, and then as part of the public hearing process, we sent public hearing notices to everyone who was once again in the in the planning area itself. So, what percentage do you think of the people who have land in this neighborhood were contacted or? <coughs> depends how you classify percentage. I mean, so if you look at the acreage of land itself, we met with uh, the Dykemans, the Cowlings, uh, the Pan Capital property, the Curlick property, um, the Mowers, the Marty property. And we also had a meeting with, with Epic as well. So uh, this really is for Darren, but Darren's way in the back and you probably can answer this. Uh, what percentage of this land currently could be serviced by mm. city services? Mr. And Sir? I do know, and I do know that we have stubbed water across the way, and I know that as being part of public works. But looking at the property and the topography, I'm sure you guys, when you were laying out this neighborhood plan, you were you were considering those things and the expense that it would take to get infrastructure to these other pieces. Sure. So I can I can start by answering that, and if third wants to jump in he can come up but I think I can probably cover the basics of it so in general this proper this area is divided into you want to take it okay <laughs> into two <laughs> into two pressure zones uh, the, the, the central pressure zone is a lot located across the street from northern lights at that T intersection there as you go east on uh, County Highway PD towards Woods Road uh, that is uh, in an area that cannot be served currently by uh, the central pressure zone as lands on Woods Road are developed that would take a, a booster uh, of some type to boost the pressure to those areas. Uh, ultimately, if you keep going north up Woods Road, uh, long term that would be potentially take a water tower as Mr. Dykeman had, uh, had alluded to tonight. Um, going west, there are on the screen before you those red lines. Uh, those red lines are higher elevations of lands that as you get west of those red lines going west, uh, those are lands that we're not exactly sure if we'll be able to serve those or not with uh, municipal services just because of pressure constraints that we have. 
Um, as development occurs that, in that direction, we'll need some type of water study either completed by the city or by developers to take a closer look at that. Um, but between those, that red line in the west and the red line on the east, uh, that is in the, in the central zone that we have existing. It looks like your screen's not working. My okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, it seems ahead. it seems like there's a significant amount, a, a portion of this that currently would not easily be fed by city services. So it begs the question from my point of view, why we are talking about including this in a neighborhood plan and why we're not focusing more on the area that is specific to what we could actually serve right now or in the relative short term. Mr. Sarah, please. We could serve property across from Northern Lights relatively quickly. You know, water, as you alluded to, is stubbed there. Sanitary, I believe. Which, in all fairness to the people who are out <coughs> listening, is Legend's End. Correct. So that's my point. Why are we not talking about that particular piece and what the real expectation for that particular landowner is for that piece of property? and the implications to it in general. Because I think Jack alluded to it a little bit, uh, I think under the current plan, or the plan that you're showing right here, the densities are pretty low, but they could be significantly higher, which I'm, again, I'm, I'm on record as not being somebody who supports high density development, uh, especially there. I just, I have a real problem with it for a lot of the reasons that have already been mentioned here tonight. Mr. Jacobson? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The water utility currently has a central pressure zone on the north side of County Highway PD at the intersection of Northern Lights and PD. We can serve any lands within that area below an elevation of 1,040, I believe is a rough number. The water master plan that was done in 2015 identifies that, and I'd have to go back and actually look at the, the actual report to see what the number is, but it is within that range. A tower would be needed up by Woods Road at some point when the demand is there and additional storage is needed within this area. How that tower is gonna get filled is by a a booster station that would be positioned roughly at the southeast corner of Northern Lights and County Trunk PD. So that's the water side of things. What the ultimate demands are up there is all going to be based on land use and if the central zone and the wells that we have in place can currently supply those needs and the fire flow will be updated as needed in the future. So if if our system becomes inadequate, then additional sources are gonna be needed. Um, regarding the sanitary sewer, the one advantage this area has is the Madison Metropolitan Sewerage District has a lower Badger Mill Creek as the main discharge point for all the sewer in this area. That is not storm sewer, that is strictly just wastewater. So they have a project that is currently bringing that interceptor to the north side of PD roughly by the spring of 2018. The extension of that sewer will be based on the need for it. Um, so that's where, so all sewer will basically flow almost to basically where the Channel Ravine is now known as the Dry Tributary, which is along the floodplain line shown on the maps in the planning study. That covers the sewer utility Storm sewer will all need to be designed adequately to meet all ordinances and every other governing code, whether it's state, county, or city. And traffic will be assessed as development occurs with traffic, traffic impact analyses, such as what Adam referred to as before. So in the, the intersection of Northern Lights and PD has been set up when and if needed, a connection point to the north could be added to it. We designed it to have capacity uh, for the signal operations there as needed in the future. So hopefully that kind of gives you a quick 
executive summary of the public works and utility side of the development up there and the broad spectrum of the plan. I can take any other questions if any, needed. Any other questions right now for Mr. Jacobson? Not seeing any? Thank you. Any additional feedback? Mr. Diaz, please. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say, yeah, to, to echo Alder Doyle's comments, there's a lot of great restaurants in Verona and there's more openings. So I think I think that, that we are balancing out there. I, I think in regards to Legend's End, like, yeah, technically this isn't approving the Legend's End thing, but like if the plan passes how it is, this is in 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 all but name, this is approving the Legend's End development. So I think it makes a lot of sense to talk about it because once this is approved, Legend's End is probably going to happen. Um, and as far as, uh, and I forgot to mention this previously, um, that my overall thoughts on the plan, I'm skeptical. I think at some point the city's going to be there, re regardless of what it is, whether it's Legend's End, how, you know, single family homes, whatever it is, I, I'm just skeptical that the city's ready to be out there right now. I want to see a, 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 a lot of incremental development to the city, a way to keep the city to keep its hometown feel. Um, I think some infill development in, this order, in order as well. And to me, this just seems like we're, we're running out on behalf of one landowner, um, you know, and 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 even just just the fact that we're running this plan that that seems centered on this one development, uh, as was raised during public comment, I have some questions about fairness. Um, if certain people get to pick what kind of zoning development they get, and you know, gosh, I'm not a developer, but I know some of those zoning designations are worth more money than others. I, I, I kind of I kind of question the whole process. Um, so so right now my thing is that I think you know we'll be there but maybe it'll be five years maybe it'll be ten years and you know gosh by my my pessimistic watch um, we're due for another housing crash so it might be more than ten years and so to me I'm just not ready to commit the current city resources to to, the, to this big risky project thank you thank you mr. Diaz any additional questions or comments uh, mr. McGilvery yeah um, Mr. Sayer, as it relates to A and B in the city or the town, um, where are we at with the A portion, given that we're already talking about the B portion now? Sure. So the, excuse me, the, the, a, the a portion that uh, is on the screen before you, the A uh, part that's close to M and PD, uh, the utility work for that project is starting now uh, that project will be wrapped up at some point at end of 2019 so my understanding is I believe in 20 uh, spring of 2019 the project or the area would be able to have uh, services extended into development <coughs> that's occurring there uh, for that area we also have that neighborhood design charrette that is occurring this coming Thursday with forward development uh, for their uh, potential development of those lands uh, other areas in that A include lands that I believe are north of Liberty Business Park, uh, north side of Whalen Road. Um, development of that will be you know, contingent upon, one, creating a neighborhood plan for that area, um, and then second, uh, development happening actually in Liberty Business Park. Uh, I believe other A, A areas are also in the southwestern part of the city, which is Highway 69, uh, southwest of the, the coding place of 18151. Um, that area has been on the, the docket here for some time. Some of those lands are in the urban service area, so that those lands are, are ready for development. The, the one big challenge there is just the, the cost of running utilities is, is quite expensive. So it's definitely slowed development because of the, the cost constraints on that. But the next you know, area that's happening here is that north neighborhood, which we've been talking about now for some time. Thank you. Ms. Doyle, please. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to add that, again, if we want to ensure that we're developing the city in a thoughtful and meaningful manner, I believe it's necessary to go through this process in creating neighborhood plans. And although there has been some talk of a specific development with this, um, obviously that's a, going to be a lot further down in the process, any specific approvals for specified developments. Um, I know that there's, again, they seem intertwined at this point, but I don't think that we can move forward in the planning process in a thoughtful way if we don't take the steps to make sure that we, we have 
zoning in place and ideas of what development in different areas should look like. And again, it's not in relation to any specified development. It's just so that we know what could potentially happen in these areas because without that, we can't get the subsequent approvals and move forward. So those are just my thoughts on it. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions, comments, or feedback? All right, um, I would just recommend this, that if there is anything that comes up after this evening, um, please funnel those through Mr. Sayre. Please do not CC all members of the council. If you're sending emails, we wanna make sure we're not violating the open meetings law. So if there is anything, uh, please funnel those through Mr. Sayre, please. Thank you. Uh, next, we will move on to agenda item 9B2, discussion and possible action. Uh, Mr. Sir, do you want to provide the background on this agenda item, please? Thank you. This is resolution R-17-043, approving a precise implementation plan located at 720 to 730 Schubert Street and specifically located on lots 33 through 36 of the home gro hometown Grove subdivision that would allow for the construction of a four unit townhouse. The proposed precise implementation plan PIP would allow for the construction of a four unit townhouse in the hometown Grove subdivision. The proposed townhouse will be the last townhouse building to be constructed in this development. The plan commission held the required public hearing on September 5th of 2017 and voted four to zero to recommend for the approval of the PIP with the following conditions. That one, prior to the issuance of building permits, the applicant shall submit a revised landscaping plan that provides full screening of the adjacent single family lot to the south. And two, the applicant shall obtain an erosion control permit prior to starting construction. Thank you, Mr. Sayre. Questions, comments, potential motions? Mr. McGilvery, please. Uh, for the sake of uh, conversation, I will make a motion to approve resolution R-17-043, approving a precise implementation, um, implementation plan located at 720-730 Schubert Street. We have a motion by Mr. McGilvery. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Diaz. Mr. McGilvery, you made the motion. Do you want to speak to the motion? Um, I'm sorry, I should have made a contingent upon the, the approvals or the conditions that were noted by and the uh, second Mr. Agrees. Sayer. I, I, do, I just think it's interesting that we're back to the four units. That would be my only comment. I think we've been back and forth with the four units in this location and condominiums. And like most things, um, it's cyclical. It, at, at one point, uh, previous council was told there would never be four units or condos there wasn't going to happen because the, the economy wouldn't support it. And then at that time, I think uh, the council said, well, that's okay, but we're not going to approve what you're asking to do. And here we are again talking about four units. So I'm supporting. Thank you. Mr. Diaz, did you want to add anything? Uh, I think it's a good idea, and I think we should, we should pass it. Okay, thank you. Other questions or comments on the motion? Questions or comments on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the approval of resolution number R-17-043, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. We are now on agenda item 9B3. Mr. Sayre, please. Thank you. This is resolution R-17-044, approving a precise implementation plan located at 501 West Verona Avenue, 503 West Verona Avenue, 507 West Verona Avenue, 513 West Verona Avenue, 100 Legion Street, and 501 through 522 Top Avenue that would allow for the construction of, a 200, of 243 apartment units and 23,495 square feet of commercial space. The proposed precise implementation plan, PIP, <coughs> would allow for the construction of two mixed-use buildings and one multifamily building. Overall, the entire development will provide 23,495 square feet of commercial space along Verona Avenue and 243 apartment units. The Plan Commission held the required public hearing on September 5th of 2017 and voted 4-0 to zero to recommend for the approval of the PIP with the following conditions. One, the PIP shall become effective, the PIP shall become effective upon Ford Development Group acquiring the properties identified within the application boundaries. 
two, four, development group shall enter into a developer's agreement with the City of Verona. Three, prior to the issuance of building permits, the applicant shall submit a revised landscaping plan that conforms to the City's landscaping point requirements. Four, the applicant shall submit a bike parking plan for City staff approval. Five, the applicant shall submit a CSM, Certified Survey Map, for approval combining the parcels and dedicating right away once for development group acquires the properties. Six, the applicant shall request vacation of Top Avenue per the requirements of Wisconsin State Statutes. And seven, the applicant shall complete a traffic impact analysis, TIA, for approval by city staff. Thank you, Mr. S Thank you, Mr. Sarah. Questions, comments? Mr. McGilvery, please. Again, for the sake of opening up discussion, I'll make a motion to approve resolution number R-17-044, approving a precise implementation plan located at 501 West Verona Avenue, 503 West Verona Avenue, 507 West Verona Avenue, 513 West Verona Avenue, 100 Legion Street, 501 through 522 Top Avenue that would allow for the construction of 243 apartment units and 23,495 square feet of commercial space. We have a motion by Mr. McIlroy. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Doyle. Is that conditions too in the packet? I was going to say that all seven of them. <laughs> okay. I, again, Mr. McIlroy, you made the motion. Um, I think Mr. Winicky did a great job of kind of highlighting where the city has been in, in previous at previous times with uh, all those parcels and what a great opportunity this this particular project is, as you all know. And as I just said, I'm not a big fan of high density development, but when you're going to do it, I think this is this is the right, right way to do it, and I think it's the right time to do it for that particular or those particular pieces. It creates a great opportunity to um, fix a problem we know we have, and uh, I'm glad to see that they've stuck with it and they were back before us tonight. Thank you, Ms. Doyle. Thank you. Um, I definitely still appreciate the need for redevelopment in this area, but continue to have concerns regarding the existing multifamily units. Um, I've gotten feedback from some of my constituents who this is in District 1 here, um, who have said that they have had issues with rental agents, um, just as far as transparency regarding this process, when they've asked for information regarding this specific development, they've been told that they have no idea what they're talking about. When there were notices literally posted in this area saying that there was a public hearing, it was after the public hearings had even occurred. So would just um, appreciate maybe if someone can speak about what that process looks like and definitely understand the need especially until development moves forward to continue to rent these properties and get an income from them but um, just would appreciate more information regarding that as well as um, maybe just for the benefit of folks who might be watching at home just more specific information uh, regarding the vacation of top avenue thank you go ahead Good evening, Ron Hench with Ford Development Group, and um, I'll, um, I can speak specifically to that need. Now, as it relates to the public hearing notices, um, uh, we, uh, uh, we are not the owners of the property at this time. We did, as there is a public hearing, um, each time notified the owners and requested and made sure that they committed to us that they would communicate it to their tenants. And what happened after that, we don't totally control. So I did not, I cannot speak specifically as to the delivery time frame of those. Okay. Um, what I can speak to, though, is what our our plans are as it relates to the property and and the timing of that. Um, and we have communicated this to the current owners of the property as well. And I'll give you just a little bit of background information might help you. There's actually 24 units there. Um, at this point in time, 23 of those units are rented. And um, depending on the owner, and everybody does it different, some of the uh, leases are month to month, and they've been month to month for a number of years. That hasn't changed uh, because of our involvement. Um, others are a combination of, of um, short-term leases and even annual leases. Um, 
to date and what we've told the owners is there is no plan that when we would purchase the property and start the process of the environmental remediation portion to change anything as it relates to those units on Top Avenue. And we've even given authority to the owners to extend the annual leases on there. There's leases right now that extend out through October of 2018 in certain, in, in, in at least one case and they're annually renewing them. Um, our plan would be that when we take that over that we would re-engage those who currently own those properties to continue to manage them until such point in time as that section of the project is needed. We would start on the front part of the project with the environmental remediation and of course chase that and try to make sure that all of that is handled properly as is required and as we then proceed through the project, we would ultimately then move toward those apartment units and, and at that point in time, um, uh, those residents would, would have to find um, housing as we redevelop that portion. That could be anywhere from um, you know, nine to 12 months or more depending on time frame for dealing with that front part of the property. Um, as we were asked um, to come back with a, you know, how would we deal with those residents at that point in time, and we will engage early with them and do a number of things. First of all, as we get an understanding of the um, tenants and what their needs are, we will sign, uh, it's either going to be an FDG or a third party, we haven't made that decision at this point in time, but a relocation specialist who would work with them to find um, uh, and meet their needs, what, wherever um, that may be, and we then also would work to help them with their moving um, um, time frames and reimbursement of their moving costs. Um, so that, that's a discussion that's coming down the road a ways. It won't happen <clears throat> directly at December 31st of 2017, or it's mainly in the first quarter if everything is approved, that we would start to be able to purchase the property and start the environmental remediation. Okay. Thank you, and do appreciate that um, it sounds like you've definitely been putting some thought into the at least beginnings of these processes and just um, just wanted to convey, again, what I had been hearing from residents and constituents just because, you know, at best, when you can literally see signs that say that there was a public hearing and have known that there was a public hearing that happened for rental agents to say they have no idea that this is even being discussed is disingenuous at best. So thank you for your time and efforts. Right, you're welcome. Other, Mr. Diaz, please. Thank you. Well, well I have a ton of respect for Joe Winicky, um, and I, I really want to see the gas station developed. I mean, for me, this comes down to, you know, we're going to use public TIF, public incentive to tear down working class housing to put up luxury housing. That's, that's to me, just a red line for me, and I, I'm opposed to this project. I, re I remain opposed to this project. If it, if it was the other areas, I, I, you know, I would be 100% in favor leaving the parade, but as it stands right now, I can't support any portion of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Linder, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I drive through this area quite a bit since my district's on the, the west side, and there's always been a thought where that gas station has been always been um, need of basically needing redevelopment this is a good opportunity to do that. There's, I know there's some drawbacks, you know, putting TIF towards residential is not my, um, it's not something I really favor. The density is more than I would like, but I'm giving and take. I think overall the idea of this project is really gonna enhance the west side of Verona. Ones like I said, I go through a lot, not everybody drives through it as much as probably uh, the people in the west side, district one and two. This is going to be, I think it's going to be a nice project. It's going to provide a lot more housing for people. Um, right now, this current property provides 24 units. This now will provide 243 units, so it's, you know, 10 times more. Um, I think it's going to be nice. Um, I look forward to seeing the completion, and uh, I will support it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Linder. Other questions, comments? Mr. McGillivray, please. I wonder if either yourself or Mr. McCorsky or Adam can speak to the TIF component of this, put a value on it for someone who might be listening. And when I say value, what the city's investment okay. in this is. And, and I can, the reason I'm asking that question, I understand what Mr. Diaz is saying, um, but y you also have to remember there's some pretty significant remediation that 
needs to take place if this property is going to develop that you're going to invest tiff probably if you want to ever see this property develop in any fashion simply because the remediation that has to take place moving forward and it's not the remediation is not limited just to that parcel it's it's a bigger picture that we got to look at when uh, we're having this conversation and I I certainly understand what Mr. Diaz is saying but I'd rather have us look at our investment in that piece of property as making it whole and usable again in a fashion that would be good for the city. Mr. McCorsky, please. Uh, as the TIF district um, proceeds, it hasn't been approved yet. It's gone through uh, some portions. It still needs to come to council. It will come to council next uh, council meeting. Uh, but um, the, uh, the, the investments will be uh, remediation of the, the property <coughs> and then investments into the mixed use uh, parts of the project. And uh, the, the TIF plan uh, has a uh, uh, estimated number of roughly $5 million. But that will be up to council as that moves forward. And uh, as uh, the council looks at uh, uh, the, uh, the, the TIF request and the development agreements. Other questions or comments? Just, I'll keep mine very brief. Uh, I think you've all heard them before. Um, I am 100% supportive of this project. I really commend the developer and all those that are working with the developer for putting uh, this many parcels together. It's uh, by means no easy task. Um, I used to, Mr. Linder, I used to drive West Verona Avenue every day when I lived out in that area and I still um, make a habit of getting out there quite a bit. There certain, certainly are certain uh, parcels here that are blighted, not all of them I would say, but uh, many of them are. And for those of you that were around in the early to mid 2000s when we talked about the barbell approach, when things happening on East Verona Avenue um, and then the West End was being proposed and we talked about that barbell approach and, uh, and both on South End and uh, North Main Street, that's happening. And this isn't going to be the last project that we see. This is a vote in support of this is a vote for progress for the city of Verona. I just I can't tell you um, how important I think that this is moving forward. So I would strongly encourage you to support this. Additional, Ms. Gaskell, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to propose that we look at this as an opportunity to develop affordable housing strategies for the city. It keeps coming up over and over again. We're effectively displacing 23 families. And, um, you know, the, this whole project has benefits. Obviously, the environmental remediation, remediation is a great benefit, but we are effectively moving, getting rid of 23 affordable housing units. And I'm talking affordable, like $800 to $900 rent for two bedrooms, which in Verona is really difficult to find. So going forward, I would really like us to look at as a city through the planning department, through us hopefully adopting it at some point, that we consider affordable housing strategies so that future developments truly have affordable units. You know, <coughs> I'm just, I feel really strongly about that. I think I do support this project, but with the caveat that with all of the development we're doing for market rate housing, market rate apartments, focusing primarily on our epic population, that is not just Verona. I mean, Verona is not just epic. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Doyle, please. Um, well, that's why in, in previous rounds of feedback, I think I mentioned that LIHTC, this could be a great opportunity to have a LIHTC project here in the city of Verona. Middleton does that extremely well, utilizing low-income housing tax credits where you can have mixed income developments. And I think that's something that's especially lacking in Verona. As alluded to earlier, you're lucky if you can come across a two bedroom in Verona for 14 to 15. I know I'm paying about 16 right now a month for a two bedroom. Um, so eight to 900, that's something that is quickly evaporating from the market. And again, market demands have a huge effect, vacancy rates, but again, utilizing tools that are out there, we can, intentionally help create spaces for you know our 
our teachers, our families, our public safety workers, you know, retail workers. That's been an ongoing problem here in the city of Verona is businesses having to amend their hours because there's a lack of public transportation to connect people to jobs and they can't afford to live in the city of Verona. It's affecting all areas of our community. So I, that's something that would make this project palatable for me. Other questions or comments? Just Ms. Ricky, please. I just feel like I need to reiterate that I am not comfortable providing TIF money for the removal of families from their homes either. And I like the idea of you maybe setting the, um, being the, at the forefront of doing what these other older people have spoken about um, in order to create that actually affordable workforce housing um, in a new development. Um, and then I too would, would love to support this project. Other questions or comments? Mr. Sarah, please. Just a couple of questions that Ms. Doyle had. Um, regarding the notice, um, we don't notify renters. We don't have their information. So we do uh, post, obviously, then public notices in the paper. We post them in the required places. We put the signs on the property as well. We post the plans to the website. We send out an email on the website as well, too. So uh, from a notice standpoint, that's how our, our department kind of handles that. Regarding the vacation of Top Avenue, that process will be driven by stat state statutes, and there's two processes that, that may go. Uh, one is a 40-day type requirement, requirement with a public hearing. Forward development can't go forward with that until they actually own the property. So the, the owners adjacent to the roadway have to request either the discontinuance or the vacation of the road. So uh, that's why there's a condition in that in that approval is because it it can't be done until they they own it. So we'll we'll work out that requirement as 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 the project goes forward. I think regarding just one comment, just on some of the comments tonight, I just want to be clear: the request tonight is nothing to do with the TIF. Uh, the request tonight is the, the land use and the, the project that's before you. I know there's been TIF discussed. I know that's a piece that's coming at some point, but I just want to be clear the the project itself, when looking at it from a planning and zoning standpoint, to be honest, should have nothing to do with the TIF itself. I know it factors in when you, when you hear about it because it's all kind of there, but uh, if there's concerns about the incentive and the public dollars, that that's an appropriate discussion point as part of that developer's agreement. And that's part of the reason why there's a condition on this that for development should enter into a developer's agreement with the city. There's right-of-way dedication, there's TIF incentives as well too. So I just, I just want to be kind of clear in that of, I know that's being discussed, but I would encourage you, I guess, to just look at the aspect of the use and the planning of this and not so much as the public dollars, because that's a, a different conversation that the council still needs to have and hasn't been had. Thank you. Ms. Doyle? Um, I'd just like to clarify that I wasn't any criticism of the way that the public hearing was communicated. It was just the fact that I was getting feedback from residents who were aware of the public hearing saying that um, rental agents were saying that there was no proposed development on this site. So that's what it was. It's not a criticism of the city or um, your processes. It sounds like communication has been clear on that end. It was just the denial of a process that has been very public that was troubling. Thank you. Other questions or comments? S Mr. McGilvery, please. Uh, yeah, I, I guess just from uh, uh, to, to, to talk a little bit about the policy point of view, I, I, I'm having a hard time understanding how we think we're going to direct people to build something brand new and then provide it at 800 bucks a month uh, for a two unit. That's not realistic. I mean, the way the, those particular properties, the reason they are at that rate is for a very specific reason. They're older, they tend to be a little bit run down, and that's the way the market works. You don't build to the lowest common denominator and expect it to stay right there. That's It's just going to get pushed down farther. The way I would see this is that you are bringing in, yes, you're bringing in a whole bunch more new apartments. You're supporting your downtown, which we've talked about numerous times about finding ways to support our downtown. And as a higher end apartment, that's a, just by nature is going to push an, o an older apartment that may be on the cusp down into that lower range. That's just how it works. And I, I just have a real problem with the city attempting to drive. I, I've never seen it work. 
if you look at any place that tries to build strictly affordable housing, it becomes a problem right away because it, that's the lowest common denominator is not what we should be going for. I, I just don't understand that, that concept. I can, I can support the idea of affordable housing. I can support the idea of having that mixed use in your community, but that happens organically and naturally. We've been talking about organic. That's, it happens that way. It doesn't, you don't build it. Thank you. There's a lot of comments I could make in addition to that, but I want to respect the agenda item and that we stay specific to the PIP for this development. But I don't disagree with you. Other questions or comments? Ms. Ricky, please. I guess I'm wondering then, and I'm hoping this is directly related um, to the agenda item, but can Top Avenue apartments be taken out of the, the precise implementation plan? Ron, do you want to speak to that? That's uh, actually a question that I've been asked before by Mr. Diaz there. Um, we didn't originally uh, approach those apartments as being part of the project. Um, we started with the properties up front on Verona Avenue, but there's a significant cost to the environmental remediation component and to the um, other infrastructure things that need to occur as a result of this project. And to support them, there's a balance of the financial part of the transaction that is needed in order to um, you create the increment that um, um, is needed for all aspects of the project. So ultimately, and that related to our, the density, other things that, that, that came about, and so for the project to work overall, um, those properties are needed to be part of that. Um, now, I, I will comment in, in, um, uh, uh, to, as it relates to affordable housing. Um, there, the, one of the reasons why there's only 23 units rented instead of 24 is because significant repairs would be needed to make it habitable. Uh, and there are others that are coming offline that are going to be taken offline until those repairs are made. Um, it's not that the housing that is there right now, it may be affordable, but it does not mean that it's ideal. And um, we believe that, that we're helping in a variety of ways. And one of those is to create an, an excellent area for the city of Verona overall. And, um, and we will work hard with those residents to find them good housing. Thank you. Thank you. Additional questions or comments? Seeing none, the motion before you is to approve resolution number R-17-044 with the, was it seven conditions? With the seven conditions outlined in the report. Seeing no further questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no? No. Motion carries on a five to... And the motion passes. I'm just getting caught up on my notes here. Mr. Mayor, could you just clarify um, how many votes you had? I thought we had um, four. We had four and then two no's okay. and one abstention. Thank you. I. It just didn't sound that way, so. <laughs> so, I, so I took it as. All right, we are on agenda item 9B4. Mr. Sayre, please. Thank you. This is resolution R-17-045, approving a general development plan for festival foods at 660 Hometown Circle that would allow for the construction of a 67,867 square foot grocery store. The proposed general development plan, GDP, will allow for the construction of a 67,867 square foot grocery store east of Farm and Fleet. Questions from the Planning Commission included questions about 
the recommended condition for the vacant store re rehabilitation agreement. The plan commission held the required public hearing on September 5th of 2017 and voted four to zero to recommend for the approval of the GDP with the following conditions. One, the GDP shall become effective. One, the GDP shall become effective upon festival foods, the applicant acquiring the properties identified within the GDP. And two, prior to the GDP becoming effective, the city and festival foods shall enter into a store rehabilitation slash vacant store agreement. Thank you, Mr. Sarah. Questions, comments, motions? Mr. Steiner, please. Um, Mr. Sarah, I had some questions from uh, a few folks who are worried about those beautiful trees that are on this lot. Are the, uh, is there a way to save those trees and, and relocate them, uh, dig them up and move them, or are they just going to be destroyed? Uh, do you know? I, th I think with the, uh, the trees that are in the main development area, which is where the building is and the loading areas behind the building, I think it's extremely difficult to save any of those trees. I think the ones on the perimeter on the very northern edge in the green area and beyond our site, there's some very mature trees as well to the north of the site. Obviously, we'll do everything we can to keep those that are on the perimeter that aren't in asphalt and buildable areas. Any further follow-up, Mr. Steiner? I'm disappointed. Okay. Additional questions, comments, motions? Questions, comments, motions? Mr. Mayor. Mr. McGilvery, please. Again, for the sake of discussion, uh, I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve resolution R-17-045, approving a general development plan for festival foods at 660 Hometown Circle that would allow for the construction of 67,867 square foot grocery store with the uh, Conditions as noted by Mr. Sayer, two to be exact. We have a motion by Mr. McGilvery. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Linder. Mr. McGilvery, you are the author. Anything to add? Um, not at this point. Uh, I was kind of hoping Kay. that we'd have a discussion about it. Questions or comments on the motion? Mr. Diaz, please. Thank you. Um, this is a question for Adam. I'm sorry, my packet's, I'm having issues loading this packet. There's a lot of stuff in it. But um, was Festival Foods, did they, they sorted out the stuff with the landscaping, correct? This is Sarah? Correct. They are no longer requesting an exemption. So that was an exemption that we talked about last time and that they're now meeting that 25% requirement. Excellent. Um, my second question is, are they asking for any exemptions? This is Sarah? Yes. Let me pull up my packet. Mine's preloaded. <laughs> So one of the exemptions is a, a setback exemption. So this is in the downtown overlay district, which has a minimum setback of 15 feet and a maximum setback of 25 feet. Uh, so they're requesting exemption to that maximum setback of 25 feet in order to be consistent with uh, uh, Farm and Fleet. A second exemption is to the parking stall uh, depth. They're actually making them slightly larger. That's to accommodate uh, the loading of groceries in the back of cars. Um, and then finally, the last exemption, which is escaping me, and I'm getting to it. Um, side yard was one? Correct, side yard was one as well with regards to a side yard setback with Farm and Fleet. Um, and that's because there's a shared parking to the west as well, so there would be no, no setback to that. I believe that's all three of them. Correct. And there'll be parking. Mr. One more thing: there should be, be parking yeah. in the front of the building as well, too, which typically isn't allowed Kay. in the Mr. overlay district. Mr. Diaz, please. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's my last remaining issue with this with this project is the way the parking is laid out. I, I don't think I made it any secret that I'm unhappy, with you know, well before my time with the, with the the project on the the whole Blaine's project. I voted against most of the stuff there, and I plan on voting voting against this one as well. Um, 
I did want to say that I, I like the idea of the, uh, the the empty store condition. Um, I know it was um, through some discussion at the Planning Commission. I, I don't if Festival Foods comes in, I don't think it's going to be an issue, but I think it's a good way to protect to protect the city um, for from any you know potential blighted areas. Um, so I, I just want to say I, I really do like that. And um, you know if if this does pass and Festival Food comes in, I, I I wish them nothing but the best and success. Thank you. Mr. Linder, please. Thank you. So what, uh, why so many parking spots? I ten degree looks, I mean, we require 227, you're asking for 389, and it's a, that's a big difference. Yeah, um, my name is Mark Anderson. I live in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and uh, I'm in the senior leadership group of festival. Um, uh, our, our business model is significantly different than most uh, retail grocery stores and the, the, uh, the, the traffic counts that we generate um, tend to be significantly higher than stores of similar size. Uh, we would expect that, uh, and we measure, generally we measure things on a weekly basis, our sales and our customer count. We would expect that this store would open with about 17,000 guests or customers per week um, and it doesn't come spread through all the hours of a week you know it comes in spikes when people uh, I think in a community like this we would be very busy from four to seven and then on, on on Sundays and Saturdays would be big days for us there you know so you have big peaks of volume big peaks of traffic at certain times and then you have the seasonality effect uh, as well the other thing that's pretty unique about us is um, uh, today so much of the products that are sold in a grocery store are centrally produced uh, and then shipped to the stores. Um, our business model uh, results in us producing the vast majority of the fresh foods we sell. Um, what it does, it allows us to have very fresh product that we can make several times per day to keep it fresh, and not have to do things like add preservatives, uh, and 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 you know have that for our customers when they, when they want to buy it and have it to be uh, uh, very fresh. So we prepare an awful lot. We have very extensive kitchens in our delis, uh, probably larger than anything uh, uh, any other retailer in the state would have in terms of. The type of uh, uh, cooking we do, preparation of, of entrees, of, 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 of salad bars, of, of, of salads in our service cases, things like that, that are often centrally produced and shipped to the stores we do in our stores. Um, we have very extensive uh, service, uh, fresh meat and seafood. Um, we do that all in store, uh, all that seafood preparation. Uh, the vast majority of seafood is flown in uh, daily. Uh, so fresh, uh, and it takes a considerable amount of, of handling and labor and people to do that. Same thing with their meat. Uh, our bakeries are, are also um, do very little. Um, we don't do any central baking at all. It's all done in the store. Um, the vast majority of the products are scratch. It takes a lot more people, a lot more labor to produce the products that we sell. Um, so you will see the, uh, the employee count or, or associate count, as we like to call it, uh, significantly higher uh, than uh, a typical 65,000 square foot store. Um, I, I was the president of a large retail uh, business unit that covered 17 states before I came to work for Festival five years ago. And uh, I can tell you that the uh, employee count in this store will be about double what it would be in a, in a, uh, another 65,000 square foot store that operated their business in a different way that we do. So we would, uh, uh, we would start the, uh, this store with about 250 associates and that would grow over time to somewhere around um, 300 associates uh, with about 80 to 100 being full time and the balance being part time. You know, so that's a big part of the reason why the the parking ratio of how we measure it is is is, is five spaces per thousand square feet. Uh, why it gets us to that uh, 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 parking count that we need. Mr. Linder, so you're saying that if you end up with 300 <coughs> employees, associates, um, 150 of them are what non-traditional store or non-festival foods would 
probably not have so the difference of roughly 160 units in the parking is to make up for those 150 employees now those 200, some of it yeah those 250 employees um, obviously we're covering all the hours of a week you know we have right stocking going on at night things of that nature uh, but when you have the peaks uh, in your business, you know, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or four to seven, and when you need a lot of people at the fr at the front end and and you know helping people with their groceries out to the to the lot, um, uh, that's where you have those peaks where it's not uncommon to have 90 to 100 associates in a store at a busy time. And unfortunately, uh, you know, we encourage things like uh, mass transit and carpooling and you know bicycles and such. Um, but still a significant amount of people do drive. Mr. Linder? Um, so one of, my, one of my comments from the last time we saw this was uh, I wasn't too fond of the way the front of the building looked and there was like no windows or nothing. So I appreciate it that you guys put some windows in. It looks a lot nicer in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think it looks <laughs> great. <laughs> um, I like that you did not ask for the exemption for landscaping as well. Um, so I, and I appreciate your, con, um, uh, your explanation for the parking. And Mr. Mr. Diaz and I have talked about trying to reduce that in previous projects. So I think we're talking the same language on that one. But um, and I think uh, I don't know. How, maybe Mr. Sayer answered this question. But how long is this was originally thought of as a grocery store location? Correct. When Farm and Fleet went in, is that correct? Mr. Sayer, please. That's correct. So when Farm and Fleet was initially discussed, they submitted a concept that was a you know, basic concept with not much detail on it, but they had boxes drawn in and there was a box drawn on this property that said grocery store. And I believe it was a uh, 60,000 square foot grocery store at that time. So, I mean, the request tonight is kind of consistent with what was initially contemplated by, by Farm and Fleet. Was that something that was approved by this body? It wasn't approved. It was as part of that, uh, <coughs> part of the discussions that were being ha had. So, I mean, anytime anyone comes in, it was probably what their thoughts were on how it could be developed, but it wasn't, it wasn't formally approved. It was discussed in some fashion, which I wasn't here, so I can't speak to how it was discussed, but it was discussed somehow. Is, is it on the, any formal plan from the city? It's, it's in the files. Yeah, it's, it's definitely in the files. It's um, a document. Sorry, just like any kind of comprehensive plan or something that would? No, 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 it was not included there. I mean, it's a six acre site though. So, I mean, I think the intent was always probably some type of large format type retailer. Okay. Thank you. Further questions or comments? Ms. Gaskell, please. Uh, does staff have any concern with the exemptions requested? Mr. Sarah, please. No, we don't have any concerns. I think the, the reality with the, from our standpoint with the downtown overlay district and the requirement to that 25 foot setback, we think it'd be foolish to try to put a building that close when you have Farm and Fleet that far back. So no, we don't have any concerns. And then in terms of the um, dealing with stormwater and the wet ponds, what are those going to look like? That's a detail that gets worked out at the PIP level. So this okay. is step three of four. There's still another step they'd have to go through. Uh, they have some initial, obviously, some initial concepts of what the stormwater could look like. We haven't seen the stormwater management plans yet, but that's something that they would have to produce and the city engineer would review. And presumably, if we have less parking and less pavement, we'd have smaller requirements of the stormwater ponds. Mr. Sarah? Generally, yes. Right, thank you. Other questions or comments? The motion before you is to approve resolution number R-17-045 with the uh, contingencies that were mentioned in the, in the report and made in the motion. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no? Nay. Uh, no votes, please raise your hand. Okay, the motion passes five to two with Mr. Steiner and Mr. Diaz voting no. Motion passes. Uh, nothing else from the Planning Commission, Mr. Sir? Nope. Okay, we will now go to page two. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, I was gonna mention, the uh, agenda item 9B5, uh, that requires a public hearing and that wasn't noticed as such, so therefore we are not gonna be taking, taking action on that this evening and we'll come back at a future meeting. Thank you, Mr. Linder, for mentioning that. So we are on uh, item 9C, Joint Planning Committee. 
Mr. Sarah, please. Thank you. This is resolution R-17-046, approving an extraterritorial certified survey map creating three lots at 1997 County Highway PB. The proposed certified survey map, CSM, will create three lots at 1997 County Highway PB. Lot 1 of the CSM will contain the existing house, and lots 2 and 3 will contain future single-family houses. The proposed land division is located in the town of Verona and was reviewed by the Joint City Planning Committee on <coughs> April 26th, 2017, as required by the boundary agreement. The committee voted 5-0 to zero to recommend for the approval of the CSM. Thank you, Mr. Sarah. Questions, comments, potential motions? Qu Mr. Linder, please. I'll make a motion to approve resolution number R-17-046, approving an extraterritorial extra certified survey map that creates three lots at 1997 County Highway PB in the town of Verona. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. Is there a second? Second, second by Ms. Rickey. W were there some? No, no, con no, no conditions. Okay. Questions or comments on the motion? Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. That motion carries. Mr. Sarah, please. Thank you. This is resolution R-17-047, approving an extraterritorial certified survey map modifying the lot lines at 2009 Manhattan Drive in the town of Verona. The proposed certified survey map will modify the lots at 2009 Manhattan Drive. No additional lots are being created with the CSM. The proposed land division is located in the town of Verona and was reviewed by the Joint City Town Planning Committee on June 19th of 2017 as required by the boundary agreement. The committee voted 4-0 to zero to recommend for the approval of the certified survey map with no conditions. Thank you, Mr. Sarah. Questions, comments, motions? Mr. Linder, please. I'll make a motion to approve resolution number R-17-047, approving an extraterritorial certified survey map, modifying the lot lines at 209 Manhattan Drive in the town of Verona. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. <coughs> Excuse me, is there a second? Second. <coughs> Who second that? I did. Ms. Gasco, please. Um, questions or comments on the motion? Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Anything else from the Joint Planning Committee? <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Public Safety and Welfare. Who's taking that this evening? Ms. Rickey, please. Under item 91, um, I make a motion to approve a special event permit application for Fall Fest on Friday, September 29th, 2017, from 4 to 11 p.m. from Lee Jordan, Verona Area Chamber of Commerce. We have a motion by Ms. Rickey. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Gasco. Ms. Rickey? Lee Jordan has applied for a special event permit for the Chamber of Commerce Fall Fest to be held on Friday, September 29th, 2017, from 4 to 11 p.m. at Veterans Park. This is the first year for this event. Um, and a drawing of the event was included in the application and um, a temporary class B and class B retailers license would also be required for this event and um, the Public Safety and Welfare Committee moved to recommend that the Common Council approve this with the following contingencies. One, that the petting zoo occurs with a licensed business. Two, that the fire department issues a permit for the outdoor fire pit and three, the approval from Parks Department for providing tractor or horse-drawn hay rides in the park. So Ms. Rickey, you want to include those conditions with your motion? My motion, yes, And Ms. Please. Gaskell, you agree? Yes. Okay. Questions or comments on that motion? Mr. Diaz, please. Thank you, I just want to be on record for saying I think this is a wonderful idea. Um, fall is the, the best season, so it's great that we're having an outdoor celebration. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving a special event permit application for Fall Fest, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Ms. Rickey, please. Thank you. Under item 92, I move approval for, for make motion to approve an application for a temporary Class B, Class B retailer's license from the Verona Area Chamber of Commerce for same event, Fall Fest on September 29th from 4 to 11 at Veterans Park. We have a motion by Ms. Rickey. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. McGilvray. Ms. Rickey? 
So this would just allow beer, um, three varieties from Hop House, I believe, to be served within the fenced area at this festival. Any questions or comments on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion uh, to approve an application for a temporary Class B and Class B retailer's license. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Anything else from Public Safety and Welfare Committee? No. All right, th thank you. We are on Public Works, Sewer and Water. Who's handling that this evening? I will, Mr. Mr. McGilbrey. Okay. Thank you. Under item 9E1, I'll make a motion to approve change order number one for project IDs 2016-103, 2016-114, and 2016-122 traffic signal projects in the amount of $27,074.41. We have a motion by Mr. McGilbrey. Is there a second? Second. A second by Mr. Diaz. Mr. McGilbrey. Thank you. Um, Parisi Inc. has completed the projects uh, outlined in the previous statement, which included the installation of traffic signals at three intersections within the city of Verona. <coughs> Change order number one is to rectify the as-built quantities as required for fuel conditions. Thank you, Mr. McIlvery. We have a motion and a second. Are there questions or comments on the motion? Questions or comments? Seeing none, the motion is to approve the change uh, change order number one in the amount of $27,074.41. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. We are on uh, agenda item E2, 9E2. Mr. McIlvery. Thank you. Let's get the amount here. All this time, and you thought I would have had that lined up. Too much paperwork. The number is $49,938.01. That's excellent. That's exactly what I have here, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. $49,937.01. So at this point, I will make a motion uh, to approve change order number two for project ID 2015 dash 104 downtown streetscape stage two and three in the amount of forty nine thousand nine hundred and thirty seven dollars and one cent we have a motion by mr mcgilvery is there a second 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 by mr diaz mr mcgilvery yes in the way of explanation pracy has substantially completed the downtown streetscape <coughs> project the project will be closed out after punch items or items are addressed and final landscaping quantities are verified. Change order number two is to rectify as-built quantities for all roadway, lighting, storm, sewer, and utility items. Thank you, Mr. McIlvery. Questions or comments on the motion? Questions or comments? Seeing none, the motion before you is to approve change order number two in the amount totaling $49,937.01. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, no. That motion carries. Mr. McIlvery, please. Yes. Uh, just before we move on to the next one, I asked uh, Mr. Jacobson to kind of go back through his documents. And since we're closing this out, finishing up the downtown streetscape, which I, I hope everybody agrees looks great, uh, I thought maybe you could just talk a little bit about uh, where we came in with our budget and our timing. Sure. Mr. Jacobson, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As the budget approval for 2017 and the previous years that this project was budgeted for we were at four million and thirty five thousand dollars at the when we took the bonds out this past summer I decreased what we actually needed for the project by a hundred and thirty five thousand so that put us at a project budget of three million nine hundred thousand and my estimated projections for project completion are going to be roughly 200,000 under that. So that gives a, a quick summary of the plan budget as of last fall to where we're at today uh, with construction being completed and the project almost being closed out. Any questions for Mr. Jacobson on that project closeout? Not seeing any. Thank you for that update. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Mr. McGilvery, please. 
Um, under item 9E3, I'll make a motion to approve amendment number four for the 2014 Municipal Storm Water Services in the amount of $14,500. We have a motion by Mr. McGilvery. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Diaz. Mr. McGilvery. Thank you. Amendment number four is for additional design services and permitting efforts to complete the contract documents for the following projects. 2017-107 uh, West Park Basin, which is on Maple <coughs> Road um, and Cross Country Heights, um, and then 2017-109 Lincoln Street Channel Phase 2. Additional permitting efforts were required by the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources and the United States Army Corps of Engineers for both projects. Thank you, Mr. McGilvery. Questions or comments on the motion? Questions or comments? Not seeing any, all those in favor of approval of amendment number four for the 2014 Municipal Stormwater Services signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Mr. McGilvery, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, under item 9E4, I'll make a motion to approve a partial release of platted public utility easement at Cross Point Estates. We have a motion by Mr. McGilvery. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Diaz. Mr. McGilvery, please. If I could just ask uh, Mr. Jacobson, I believe there are conditions associated with that. If uh, he could highlight those, I want to go ahead, actually. Thanks, Mr. McGilvery. Currently, there was an existing plat at Cross Point Estates that had two utility easements identified on them. And with the replatting of that property, we need those existing easements released. And there is a new easement on the new plat that is, will justify the needs of any future utilities within that development, which is strictly just a stormwater <coughs> easement. But the easements that are current right now on the old plat need to be released by all utilities that could have interest in there, such as Alliant, MG&E, TDS. So we need the developer will have to get releases from them for final completion of those easements being released. Thank you, Mr. Jacobson. Not seeing any questions or comments. Um, any other questions? We do have a motion for approval of the partial release of platted public utility easement at Cross Point Estates. Questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. Mr. McGilvery, anything else from Public Works, sir, and water? Hello, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. We are on Mr. old business. Mayor. Go ahead, Mr. Steiner. Uh, Mr. Jacobson, do we have an update on uh, Silent Pond cleanup yet? Mr. Steiner, I got that programmed in the budget for 2018. So we got to wait another whole year? Unfortunately, you, yeah. All right. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, old business, discussion and possible action regarding selection of a city council representative to the planning commission. Uh, approval of this requires uh, a minimum of six votes. Are there any nominations at this point? Ms. Doyle? I nominate Alder Diaz. Mr. Diaz has been nominated. Are there any additional nominations? Mr. McGilvery? I'll, I'll, I'll nominate Mr. Linder. Mr. Linder has been nominated. Are there any other nominations for Planning Commission? Any other nominations? All right, I will close the nominations and I will ask the clerk to read the roll, please. Alder Steiner. Alder Linder. Alder Touche, sorry. Alder Diaz. Alder Diaz. Alder Doyle. Diaz. Alder Gaskell. Alder Diaz. Alder Linder. Linder. Alder McGilvray. Alder Riki. Alder Diaz. And the motion fails. We are on new business discussion. I should, I'm sorry. I should ask if there are any other nominations. You did. No, I mean <laughs> any other consideration. But none, all right. New business discussion and possible action regarding approval of operator licenses. Ms. Clark, please. I have operator license applications for Connie Andrew for Pasquale's Cantina, Guy Evans IV for the Draft House, and Michael Feiler as an Independent. You have heard the applicants. What's your pleasure? Move approval. We have a motion by Mr. Linder. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Doyle. 
All those in favor of uh, approval of the application signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. We are on to announcements. Are there any announcements this evening? Announcements? I have one, and that is we are going to try something new this year. Uh, we had discussions with both the city of Fitchburg and the town of Verona. And normally we have the annual meeting for Fitch Rona on a Thursday evening. We are going to move that to Monday, October 16th at 7 p.m. So it'll be the third Monday. And, this, and again, the city of Fitchburg and the town of Verona have uh, both agreed to uh, give that a shot. So the meeting is uh, 7 o'clock on October 16th, the annual meeting for Fitch Rona EMS. I would ask that you please put that on your calendars. Uh, it'll be at the, f at the fire EMS station. Can we get an email reminder, please? We can do that. Thank you. Any other announcements this evening? Any other announcements? If not, a motion to adjourn would be in order. We have a motion by, who was that, Mr. Diaz? Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Ricci. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. And that motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.